Today's C31 Sport live broadcast of the 2015 Premier Division EDFL Grand Final is proudly brought to you by the Strathmore Community Bank, 337 Napier Street, Strathmore, and Prepack Cartons, 129 to 131 Sussex Street, Pasco Vale. Hello and welcome to Windy Hill for a direct telecast of the 2015 Premier Division Grand Final in the Essendon District Football League. I'm Daryl Pittman and it's welcome to the one and only Benny Bennett. Good on your dags and uh, welcome viewers out here to Windy Hill because it's just a great day for uh, local footy. Hardly a breath of air at the present time. It's looking great. Crowd building, looking forward to a very good game. The man who's going to give us some incisive special comments is Strathmore coach Craig Clinic. Craig, welcome. Yeah, look, thanks very much, guys. I'm looking forward to a magnificent grand final today. You know, the two best teams of the season both deserve to be here. I think we're in for a real spectacle, and I'd like to see a, uh, a tight, defensive, well-fought-out grand final just to really round out the year, and good luck to both clubs. And, of course, Kev Murphy will be our uh, boundary rider providing all the colour in today's telecast, and he's over there now with a very special guest. Yeah, thanks, boys. I've got uh, AFL Hall of Famer and uh, Essendon Premiership coach Kevin Sheedy with me. Kevin, welcome to C31's coverage of the Essendon District Footy League Hello, Grand Final. It must be great to be out here at Windy Hill with a big crowd and, and a lot of atmosphere and a lot of noise. It must bring you back uh, to the times when you used to coach Essendon out here. Look, uh, many memories, obviously, but uh, just seen a terrific win here coming with uh, Keela, obviously, over... Uh, the last sort of uh, eight minutes, they kicked three goals and won themselves a premiership. So, um, look, haven't been back here for quite some time, to be honest, uh, after being up in Western City with the Giants. And, of course, uh, to see a crowd here today, Community Footy, um, sponsored by, obviously, the bank, uh, Bendigo Bank. Um, uh, it's just really, really good. And uh, I'm basically a grassroots football person, and um, I think most of us really are. But to have a game, a final, a grand finals here at Windy Hill is very, very special. How important, I mean, you're the doyen of Australian rules footy, how important is local footy, community footy, um, not only to young people, but uh, to community as a whole? Oh, I think it's a great connector. You know, to me, it's a conduit. And um, I, I've often used it as a very important sort of leeway into making sure that, uh, particularly the fans that are around Australia, not only here in Victoria, but also around the whole of Australia, you get to the clubs, you go out and you talk to them why we do things, what what we're trying to work at in the AFL and make sure that um, it sort of seeps down right through the whole of the game across Australia. And, um, and look, being up in New South Wales and being over in West Australia recently in South Australia, uh, community footy still at a very, very good level. And the standard was been pretty good. I like the standard there. I really enjoyed that game. Obviously, the grand final and the seniors coming up now it's going to be pretty... Uh, Pretty good game, and um, it's great to see uh, Dean Wallace win his way into uh, first division or into Premier Division next year after his great win out at Do the Stars. So great to see really some of the players that go back from AFL come back into community footy and coach in the city. I mean, these are grand final premiership players, and of course um, we got another one out here today, uh, coaching obviously Green uh, Greenvale, and when you see that happening, you know that uh, uh, just a good blend. And uh, just finally, you've spent a lot of time, obviously, out here to Windy Hill and uh, in the suburb of Essendon. And, of course, many of these clubs like Aberfeldy and Greenvale and Strathmore, you know, the, the really big clubs yeah. out in the Essendon District League, they've had a pretty good affinity with the Essendon Football Club over the years, haven't they? Oh, look, I think, well, well I was just saying at the, uh, as a guest speaker at the luncheon before, Mark, Mark, Mark Thompson, Premiership AFL, Essendon District League, Mark Harvey, coach of Fremantle, uh, and, and, and Matty Egan, just from down Oak Park, he's just coached us in the last couple of games this year. So, and, and there's two 400 game players in the AFL, sorry, umpires in the AFL that come out of this local Lesson District League. So, I think they should be very, very proud, everybody in the community here, of what they've reduced to push through to uh, perhaps what really helps run the AFL, and that are people from the grassroots clubs. 
Well, uh, thanks for your time this afternoon on C31 Sports Grand Final coverage. Uh, all the best today. Now, do you have a tip for us? You haven't followed the league intensely throughout the season, but are you leaning either way? Oh, look, I hope I have a do win because I've been beaten quite a number of times. I haven't won one for a while. I've been out to four or five of the clubs in the Essen District League uh, recently. And, um, look, I, I like to see people at, at clubs that really put the hard effort in. They don't always win it, but sometimes. I mean, I got beat by a couple of points last year. You like to see them win one. And, um, you know, from an AFL point of view, I'd like to wish... Um, I would like to really wish the Western Bulldogs and the Tigers um, all the best because uh, whilst it looks like Western Australia is going to run the grand final at the moment, but we've got to make sure that our clubs here in Victoria go well. Thanks for joining us, uh, Kevin Sheedy. What a great way to kick off our grand final coverage on Channel 31 on Saturday afternoon. Back to you, fellas. Thanks very much, Kev. Two Kevs there, Murphy and Sheedy. The bloke on the right got a few more kicks in his career than the bloke on the left. <laughs> But uh, Kevin will be bringing us all the colour right throughout the afternoon. Well, as Kevin Sheedy mentioned, Keel or victorious in the reserves grand final by just eight points. So a great effort by the Blues getting up in the reserves grand final. Well, Craig, um, what sort of uh, nerves as a coach and, and the players, what in the lead up to a grand final, you were there last year, what did they suffer? Oh, look, right about now, it's, uh, you know, it's that last sort of message you want to deliver to your players. It's about... It's about keeping everyone calm. It's about being focused. You know, there's a lot of things that are different about a grand final day. Whilst everyone says it's just another game, there's a lot of things that are different. You know, the crowd size, people trying to get into the rooms, family and friends probably a little bit closer than they normally would be. Uh, a lot of lot of distraction. Um, look, the game plan has stacked up all year. The list has got them to where they are. They're well coached. Today is just about execution. And I think, you know, a lot of people try and look for something that's extra special in grand finals and where I come from it's really about doing the things you've been doing all year but doing them really really well and understanding you're up against an opposition that are there because they're a really good side also and how you eliminate their ability to execute uh, and be able to execute what you want to do so yes it's nerves it's really nerves about let's get this game underway and let's get things started more so than nerves about what may or what may not happen um, but look it's, uh, it's an amazing feeling it's what you're compete for, it's what you coach for, it's what you want all your supporters and all your volunteers to be a part of, and that's where it's a really special and really important day for everyone involved. Well, let's wish them all the very best today, the combatants today. They, they're they not running far away from running through the uh, the Aberfeldy banner down there, and that's a huge banner too. Take a, uh, a fair bit of work in that one, Benny. Yeah, it would have taken them uh, all night to get that done, but uh, I suppose they've had a couple of weeks as, as Aberfeldy went from the second semi-final straight through the grand final. So their supporters would have had plenty of time to uh, get that together and uh, it looks as though they've done a pretty good job on it. OK, back with more of the action shortly here on C31 Sport. And we're back here at Windy Hill, tension building before the ultimate game of the year in the Essendon District Football League, Aberfeldy and Greenvale fighting it out for the Premier Division Premiership. We're just waiting for the uh, Aberfeldy boys to make their ways onto the arena. Uh, starting favourites, Craig, is that the way you see it? Uh, look, Greenvale absolutely, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, Aberfeldy absolutely starting favourites, undefeated all season, you know, won 19 from 19, deserve to be going in favourites, but it's a grand final. Uh, the last two years would suggest they haven't been able to get the job done. So I would enter this game if I was Greenvale, give myself every chance of winning a grand final. Now, tell us about some of the players we should be watching out for and the viewers should look out for. Yeah, sure. Look, um, sorry. Uh, I think Angus Graham's a real key. You know, Angus, uh, ex-Richmond uh, Ruckman. The key, from my viewpoint, is to stop him kicking goals. He's been pushing forward. He's been hitting the scoreboard. He sits on the fat side of the ground, dangerous player, and DeLuke is going to have his work cut out, not only at stoppages, but also eliminating his, his influence on the game, forward to centre. Through the midfield, you've got uh, number two, Wayne Paddock, number four, Mark Lynch, number eight, Josh Cabillo, and number 12, Brock McLean, all dangerous, all dangerous uh, midfielders. The player that's got to be stopped is number five, Luke Blackwell. Luke Blackwell is elite, comes straight from the waffle into this league. He is a, uh, a medal winner over there. He's got to be tagged. He's got to be stopped. He can't be allowed to get his own. Uh, sorry, receive loose ball, nor win his own ball. He'll tear this game apart if he's uh, given time and space out there today. I think the other mids, from my viewpoint, will probably go head-to-head. -head. From a Greenvale viewpoint, um, I think uh, Stephen Brewer in the midfield, number eight, really good user of the footy. Uh, Abbas have got to ensure they close him down and not allow him any time and space. Nick Lower, the 12. Nick's a, uh, 
good, strong, solid ball hunting ball winner who will be uh, who will go head to head with uh, Paddock and with uh, McLean. Uh, Rowan Nanya is a is a good, quick uh, midfielder for Greenvale. Probably not as good a user as some of the other guys, but he wins a lot of ball. He'll break lines. He'll drive the ball forward. You know, and then you look at the forward lines. You've got Kyle Remus is a very strong forward. He'll probably get Campesano today, who shut him down. Um, I've got Shinners forward for Greenvale, who I think has been a real difference as he's gone forward for Greenvale. Shinners is a player that's got to be stopped. I think last week in the first final, he'd had six shots at goal in the first seven shots of the game. So Shinners is a big job to eliminate. Here but, come Greenvale. But Remus is a dangerous forward, absolutely. That needs to well, be actually, watched. Greenvale, thanks for that, Craig. Greenvale about to enter the arena here. He Not got their banner up, so too. Greenvale's out, out first. Their banner's up. And go Jets, Jets, go Jets. Go Jets, go Jets, go Jets. Stronger for longer. So, Greenvale victorious two years ago against Abervale in the ultimate game. Burst through the banner. As we cross back down to Kev Murphy. Yeah, g'day, Dags. I'm just out here at the gate. Uh, you probably see me behind. Uh, the crowd is streaming here, uh, streaming through the gates for this fantastic grand final. Uh, it's going to be a ripper between Aberfeldy and Greenville. And as you can see, the uh, crowd is really building up. We were here last week for the Division I grand final, but certainly the, grand, the uh, crowd here for the Premier Division grand final is much bigger and I can really feel the anticipation and the enthusiasm of the crowd as we go out to ground level it's a big uh, crowd and atmosphere down here ready to start the uh, weather conditions well it's not as sunny as we would have hoped it is pretty cloudy uh, but the wind isn't that strong the grounds in fantastic condition we expect a great spectacle today for the grand final and really look forward to the action Back to you, boys. Good on you, Kev, working beautifully down there. And uh, while you were talking, we also just saw the uh, Aberfeldy side burst through their banner to start their campaign for the title. What about their nicknames, a Aberfeldy, the Gorillas? Do you like that? Love it. Well, the Caulfield used to be the Gorillas back in the old Federal League, and Fitzroy were once the Gorillas. It's a little bit different than most. The Gorillas and the Jets. Craig, we were talking about the players to watch. Uh, the EDFL uh, has made a habit of attracting very, very high-profile players and coaches in recent years. No, it has. Look, the, the competition in the EDFL has gone up to a, to a new level. I think the last four or five years has seen game plan strengthened. It's seen you know, quality coaching. It's seen uh, qu quality recruits coming into, the, uh, coming into the competition. I think the standard of footy has gone to a new level. Uh, it, it, the clubs have done a lot of work. The league's done a lot of work. But, you know, presidents of footy clubs and sponsors of footy clubs are ultimately the ones that should be uh, thanked for the, the competition we have today. I think the league, you know, hosts a really strong competition, but it's the, it's the uh, volunteers, it's the uh, generous donations from the people involved in footy clubs, and it's the kind uh, support of a lot of sponsors that, you know, help you get into those strong positions. But it's a great competition, and it's only getting stronger every year. Craig, can you tell us a little bit about those two coaches today? Oh, look, I can. I think, uh, you know, Adam Potter's new to the competition. You know, he comes out of the VFL where he's been a senior assistant and a senior coach. He's coached at Coburg. He's been involved at Williamstown. He's had a bit of time with Peter German. You know, he's brought a whole new, a whole new style in terms of this competition. The way he coaches his team is really about uh, getting, really about width. He's about trying to make the ground bigger. So he's trying to get a lot more space out there, which you'll see a lot today. Shannon Grant, on the other hand, is really about having a balanced defence. He's really about winning the ball on the inside. Then he's about pressing up the ground and really holding that ball when you get it in your forward line. They do that really well. They really cover exits well, Greenvale, and they're a, uh, they're a dangerous team. I, I think I spoke about earlier, what I, what I really want to see today is when Aberfeld to get it into their forward line, is Greenvale be able to tip them over and then on the counter-attack get the ball in their forward line? I think that's the way they can really exploit Abbas today. What you don't want is a shootout against Aberfeldy. They're just too strong. They're too offensive. They've got a lot of power forwards and a good, strong midfield. Tom Hill on camera down there is going to be very dangerous for them, but I think uh, Kev's down there again. Down to you, Kev. Yes, I'm down here with Aberfeldy coach Adam Potter. Adam, uh, you've been undefeated all season. Uh, has that added a bit of extra expectation going into today's game? No, definitely not. Um, you know, we've had, uh, I guess, the fortunate opportunity to have that weekend off, and uh, they've earned that right. And uh, the players are really clear on and focused on what their role is today. So, uh, no, that's no added pressure. The players are focused on the first 30 minutes, and then we'll reassess from there. You've uh, had a bit of bad luck in the last two grand finals. Uh, missed by under a kick. 
Do you mention that at all uh, leading up to this week, or do you just focus on the good footy you played this season? No, I wasn't involved, so there's no really point in me reflecting on something I wasn't involved in, and uh, the players understand exactly what's expected of them today, so it definitely uh, doesn't come into it at all. What do you expect from both sides in the first five minutes? Oh, look, it's, it's our great footy. It's a strong competition. It's going to be a really physical contest, and uh, our boys are prepared for that. Well, you've had a great uh, year. Hopefully you have a good day today. All the best. Thanks, mate. Back to you, fellas. Thanks, Kev. And as I say, the uh, tension building now. Both sides getting their photo taken. We'll go to a break and be back with all the action in the grand final live from Windy Hill. Hi, I'm Phil from the Strathmore Community Branch of Bendio Bank. If you do your banking with us, you can rest assured that the profits we generate will be put back into the local community. We contribute 80% of our profits back into the local community. And welcome back to Windy Hill, not far away from a start in the 2015 Grand Final in Premier Division. If it's anything like the last two, it's going to be a ripper. Don't go too far from your television sets. Umpires out on the ground. Benny, can you tell us a little bit about them? Yes, I can. Uh, the, uh, the tallest of the uh, umpires is Kelvin French. He's got the tall... He's a tall guy with the dark hair. This is his sixth uh, EDFL Premier Grand Final. So he's a uh, top umpire of the, uh, of the list. And his, along with him is Matthew Brown, who came back from the VFL. Uh, he's the uh, shorter, stockier one. And then uh, there's uh, Jonathan Williams in for his very first grand final as well. But uh, Matthew Brown umpired with his father many years ago, so he's of good pedigree and stock. Sure it wasn't his grandfather, then. <laughs> it could have been. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, and uh, we wish them all the best of, uh, of luck today. Too. If, they're, uh, if they do half the job that the umpires did last week, um, it'll be pretty good. Yeah, Rowan Saws has been a good, doing a pretty good job with the umpires and uh, he's enjoying his job and it obviously reflects from what we've seen. The umpiring standard in the league from your viewpoint, Craig? Uh, look, I think the umpiring standard has, uh, has con continued to grow with the game. I think, uh, look, the game is played at great speed now. The game's played quite technical, technically. Teams are well coached, players are well coached and the umpiring's taken a little while to get up to the same level as the... Okay. Okay. That's always similar. OK, thanks, Craig. Down to Kev. Yes, boys, I've got uh, Shannon Grant, coach, obviously, of Greenvale. I guess the question everyone wants to know is, uh, how are you going to win today against uh, a local footy team that's just been dominant all season? Uh, yeah, they're an exceptional side, so um, we just got to go out and believe. You know, we, we probably played our, our best four-quarter performance of the year last week in a, in a game that really mattered, and uh, hopefully we can do the same this week, get off to a good start and um, give ourselves an opportunity. You were pretty close when you two teams met early in the season. Uh, what have you learned from your two encounters this season? Oh, we've learned a lot about them. They're an exceptional team and they've got good players all over the park and they do a lot of things really well. So um, we know what they are. We've just got to be able to go out and execute now and uh, hope the boys have a good day out. Finally, what was your uh, last message to the boys uh, about how they played this first five minutes? Uh, don't die wondering. Just go out and uh, play with the right intent and give effort and uh, support one another and um, judge each contest on its merits. Good luck today, Shannon. All the best. Back to you, fellas. Thanks, Kev. Umpires getting their photo taken. Um, the coaches uh, throughout the league, uh, Craig, what's the sort of camaraderie like between them? Oh, look, one of the, one of the real positives from my viewpoint about the uh, Essendon District Footy League is people that are coming back from be it VFL or AFL back into the competition are understanding that it's community football and are understanding that, you know, that's about coming into the opposition's rooms after a game. That's about um, mixing and socialising with parents, family, friends, sponsors. So it's about doing that. And what I've really seen is, you know, these two guys, Shannon and, uh, and Adam, no exception, when we played at our ground, they both brought their teams in, socialised, mixed with everybody, stuck around till the speeches were done, you know, probably an hour or so, and then were on their way. And obviously we, we repay the faith when we play at their ground. Um, but look, the camaraderie between coaches is good. I mean, we're, com we're combatants at 2 o'clock every Saturday. And uh, for those uh, three hours, we want to ensure we, uh, we uh, come away with the points and probably do whatever we can in that period of time. Some things uh, you're proud of, some things you probably wouldn't do if you had the opportunity to do again. With that said, um, you know, once, once the game's done, the game is done from my viewpoint. And these guys are no exception again where it's thanks for a great game, learn, learn off one another, communicate with one another. It's, it, it's really, really, really good. I've, uh, I've enjoyed the level of coaching and, and the camaraderie between all the coaches whilst I've been back in the EDFL. Fantastic. Thanks, Craig. And, of course, it takes umpires to make a game of footy. Kev's down there with one right now. 
Yes, boys, I've got uh, Kelvin French, one of the fieldies, with me, and uh, I asked him just before you crossed if it's his sixth grand final, and I was wrong. It's actually his seventh. How's the seventh feeling so far? Just as toey as the first one. Yeah. It's uh, pretty windy conditions out here, obviously, but uh, a good crowd. How does it go on grand final day? Because the noise here is pretty loud, the atmosphere is electric. Is there a lot of pressure on you blokes? Yeah, no more than, than usual. Um, it's a great feeling, though, with the crowd going up and roaring, especially when you've got to play the holding the ball down in front of them. It's a good feeling. Uh, of course, uh, no doubt the crowd wouldn't influence your decisions today, but any difference in terms of your preparation this week and, and the other umpires? No, nah, try and keep it the same, as regular as possible. Um, it's what we do all year, so try and keep it the same. Well, we're looking forward to a uh, good grand final today. Hopefully we don't notice you blokes because you're doing a fantastic job. All the best. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Back Kev. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, Kev. Thank you very much. And uh, side starting to line up now for the uh, for the national anthem. Just for the national anthem, I just thought I'd call out. This is James Rowan, Greenvale's uh, captain. This is his ninth A-grade grand final. He's played in eight, won four, lost four. He wins today. He goes into elite air. I'm not. I'm not sure I know of a five-time A-grade premiership player in the NFL. So, good luck to him. Oh, fantastic! Thanks for that, Greg. All the uh, inside and oil coming to you from Craig Clinic this afternoon. So we've got uh, Nicole um, Condos. She'll be doing the uh, singing the national anthem and uh, well connected at Keelor Footy Club. Craig is Nicole a, a daughter of uh, of uh, Nick. Um, Nick Condos and a sister of James, right? Golden soil and wealth for toil. Our home is good by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty, rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strings and let us sing. Advance Australia Fair. And up goes the roar from the grandstands. And those stands, they're filled in the last 10 or 15 minutes as well. There are a lot more people in the gate. And they're still coming through the gate too. So uh, not far away from the start of the grand final. Butterflies are starting to settle a bit now. Greenvale's won the toss. They'll kick to the left of screen. Thank you, Craig. So uh, Greenvale kicking to the left of screen. I don't know whether there's much advantage out there. How do you see it? Uh, look, traditionally here you get a re really, really strong breeze between past this grandstand growing across the ground. So a lot of the plays tends to be spent on the far side of the ground. Very tough to score goals from this pocket down here. Uh, you really want to be getting in the ball in through the corridor at that end. And this end of the ground, it's a little bit more open, obviously not as much coverage, so you've got to keep the ball low and flat at that end. I wouldn't see a real advantage. I didn't see an advantage in the reserves game, and I wouldn't see one whichever way you're kicking here at the start of the game. Yeah, Craig, is this ground, is this a perfect ground for uh, the UDFL grand final? Oh, it's terrific. You know, it probably doesn't look as good as it, has, it normally would at this time of year. It looks a bit uh, dry and a bit burnt, like we're, uh, we've had a lot of sun and we're playing up north. But the ground is just, it's a great size. It's a great atmosphere. It's, uh, it's got everything you'd expect for a final. And I know the players really enjoy playing here. It's soft underfoot. You know, they very rarely uh, complain of sore feet after playing here. Whereas the number of grounds we play on, you get that uh, feeling of just genu generally sore through the legs. Well, we'll get you to take a look uh, during the afternoon, Craig, at the game through the coach's eyes, um, because it always fascinates me how much they change their game plan when they have to and how they um, answer certain queries that are thrown up. Sure. No, I look forward to that. Look, I think, um, I think there's a couple of key matchups that need to work really well early in particular. I want, really want to hone in on this Angus Graham, Fabian DeLuca matchup in the ruck, because Graham is just going to be trying to compete at the ruck and then get forward at all opportunities. And it's interesting, it'd be interesting to me to see what DeLuke is trying to do. He's trying to go the other way, or he's trying to defend on Graham to not let a Graham get loose ball inside forward 50. I think to win the game, they've got to roll the dice a little bit. They've probably got to hand over, and I think uh, DeLuke has got to get forward and try and uh, try and expose Graham the other way, but they've got to win the ball at the source to be able to expose him. So what a contest. I'm really looking forward to it. They both look uh, reasonably tall. Yeah, both got, uh, both got good size um, through, uh, through the spine of the ground. Um, 
I said, look, Greenvale's tools last week were very, very, very good, and they chose not to play Isaac Muller in the seniors today. He came back from Essendon VFL, and he played in the reserves game earlier, um, which surprised me a little bit. But I think Greenvale probably just couldn't go in that extra tall, given the size they already have across the uh, across the board. And uh, they've gone, obviously, with an extra uh, sort of forward mid-type in bringing Marrick into the team. But, yeah, I think I think Muller would, would probably have played in most teams uh, this weekend, but uh, apart probably Greenvale, who are, are probably tall enough as it is. Thank you, Craig. Special comments this afternoon from Craig Clinic. Well, the ball's in the middle circle. Players going to their positions not far away from a start in the grand final. OK, so Greenvale are already starting a, uh, a plus one. So they're starting with five forwards and one behind the footy. We've got, uh, by the look of it, they're freeing up Matt Smith, the 10, which Aberfowdy won't allow Smith to play loose. McNamara will have to go to him, which will free up Rowan. So there's an arm wrestle on here. It gives it a loose behind the footy here, which will be Davis for Aberfeldy. He's a player that can't be loose either. They need to round him up. What, what both coaches here can't allow to happen is the player that the opposition want loose be loose. So there'll be some real cards being played here and some real tactics going on behind the scenes. Great in, uh, insight there. We'll watch those uh, tactics with interest. The runner's already been out there, Aberfeldy's runner. <laughs> <laughs> All set for a start. So Camp sano has gone to uh, Remus. Clifton's gone to Kefford. Rowan, 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 James Rowan's gone to McNamara. And we're underway. Over to you guys. And we are away in the 2015 Premier Division Grand Final in the Essendon District Football League. Greenvale kicking to left of screen in this, the first quarter. Scrambly start to the Grand Final. No one able to get the ball out in the clear. And I'll do it again. Umpire Williams throwing it into the air. The wrestle again is on in that centre uh, square area. A little tap. Plenty of players around the footy looking for the free kick. The umpire won't have any of it. Rightfully so. So it'll be another ball up still in the centre. Hasn't moved more than two metres. Up she goes. Still in the centre circle, as you say, Benny. An airy there from uh, Nick Lower. Couldn't connect. Chance here now for Aberfeldy. The boot of Nana was it down in towards the pocket. Tapped over there on that occasion by Rowan, the veteran. And he sees it over and out for a throw in. Right into that uh, forward pocket position inside the 50 metre arc. Players taking their uh, positions there. The big ruck. Gee, they're big blokes, both of them, aren't they? Comes to the side of the back. They go in fearlessly at the present time. Hard to get a possession all the same. The hand pass comes out. Aberfeldy will go forward with a long kick into the forward line. Getting behind the footy there, Matthew Smith takes the mark easily there for Greenvale. Plays on straight away. Already the plus one's coming to play here. Matt Smith took that mark uncontested. And they've got the extra behind the ball here, which is allowing them the option to get the ball out of the back half of the ground. So there's the kick out to Nana. Nana now. Front of the Reynolds stand. Bombs long in towards the centre wing. The big fella, DeLuca, is there. Couldn't take the mark. Could have been held without it. Yes, the umpire on the spot. Free kick going the Abbott's way. And it'll be taken here by Danny Burns. Sorry, uh, Catapan. Catapan now delivers it long. Good position and good mark taken as well. Great kick to position and it'll make it easy to score it from here. That's yeah, a great mark from uh, Kefford. He had good support from Remus. He put a block in off the footy, which just blocked Clifton from that out of spoil that. He's a big, strong lad, uh, Kefford. Ball delivered high to him with space. He'll take marks like that all day. <laughs> Alistair Kefford, he's kicked 43 goals for the year for Aberfeld. He comes in. Distance, no problem here. First goal of the day. It is. First goal of the grand final to Aberfeld. Well, that's the way they'd like it, wouldn't they, Craig? Yeah, look, they had uh, good, they got forwards, you know, quite isolated. They were able to get separation on their direct opponent too with a nice block, as I indicated, from, uh, from Remus. And like, whilst Clifton uh, is a big, tall lad and he'll spoil the ball, Kefford has good reach, good leap, takes the ball at his highest point. Very hard to defend that kick, and, uh, and that was a good, strong mark. So, uh, Abbas are away. Back in the centre. It's umpire French throwing it into the air. Comes to the ground again. No decisive tap out in that one. Now it does come out. Chance to go forward for Aberfeldy again. Uh, getting back there on the floor is DeLuca Ooh. doing the roving work. Umpire pays a free kick against him. It'll be Aberfeldy to go forward. So Greenvale get to go into attack in this game. There's the kick. A good long one. They set it up. Going back the same way as the footy was Matthew Smith. 
Under plenty of pressure at the moment, the Jets' defence. They lock it up, it'll be a ball up about 30 out. Ben Clifton might have been a bit unlucky there. He don't know that he had the footy, he certainly didn't have control. Ball gets thrown into the air, comes down. Tackle laid nicely that time by Nana. And holds it up once more, so there'll be a ball up. Only a kick away from the Aberfeldy goal. Blake sliding forward, far side of the ground. No one on him. Nearly four minutes gone. First term. Scrambly passage of play at the moment. Sees another ball up. So they've handed over now. Clifton's gone to him. Knocked to the ground and out of bounds, so it'll be a throw in. They can set themselves up from here. That's what I spoke about earlier. They're all pressed up the ground. The ball's deep in their forward line, uh, in Abbott's forward line. This is the slingshot footy. Greenvale have got to get going. You've got to get the ball moving from here quickly. There's no one on the other half of the ground, the left side of the screen. There's no one past the centre circle. Hand pass came out. Catapan's been in it early, but it's stolen on that occasion. High kick up the centre wing. They set themselves. Big fist away. Good work there from El Hurley. Ball spills out. Anyone's footy. Quick hands got it over there. Opportunity for them now at centre half forward. But the Jets standing tall at the moment. Plenty of players in on top of the football. They're wrestling for it on the 50-metre arc. Jeez, that was a huge contest. It had to be won then by Greenvale. I mean, Abbas away. I think uh, it's Sardo at the bottom of the pack. Well done. Up they go again. And again, not a decisive knockout. But Aberfeldy come clear. McLean. And McLean has put the ball straight through the centre. What a great goal. There's second. I'm just seeing uh, early... Abbas are right on top at stoppages. Uh, you know, Graham's giving them first use of the footy. DeLuca's competing, competing hard, but they're getting him on the outside here, and that's Greenville are going to have to tighten this up because they haven't been forward to centre, and it's all started from stoppages. Thank you, Craig. Fascinating to watch the uh, tactical... It's not, not our normal uh, battles, view of the game, is it? Battles, and it's great to have an expert up with us, uh, picking all of those things out. Up she goes in the middle again. Chance here, the ball taken away by Blackwell. Long kick in towards half forward. No mark taken, knocked away on that occasion from McNamara. Loose footy at the moment, just inside the line. That was a little uh, pop up. Run into a hard bump, ball under a pack of players, and the umpire will have no option but to ball it up. So it's just outside the 50 metre arc for Aberfeldy. On the outer side, plenty of players around the football once more. Comes down, hand pass by Lynch. They get the ball forward again, but there's still so many around the footy. And Greenvale struggling to get the hand on the footy at the present time. The ball will be thrown in. Not that uh, they're just letting Aberfeldy go free, but uh, Greenvale just haven't got an easy possession. And they're fumbling with that first opportunity. You've got to be clean with that first ball. You fumble it, it closes, the, the time's closed quickly, and you're going to turn the footy over. Half forward, out of side for Aberfeldy. They lead by two straight goals. Jets under plenty of pressure, trying to burst his way through where there was Benello. But again, they turn it over. Aberfeldy right on top here at the moment as the ball spills over. For more work for the boundary umpire. That nice big Sharon sign. Greenvale have got to get some players forward to the footy here. I mean, they've got... Abbas have now got two loose players. If they don't round them up, the ball's just going to go straight to them and come straight back in. Angus Graham and uh, Fabian De Luca. This time it's Greenvale forward. Little push out and the free kick going Greenvale's way. Trent Shinner's with it. He's on centre wing. So it's now to kick it long into the woods. A half forward flank. His fingertip mark not there. In the end, it's going to be thrown in the forward pocket for Greenvale. Good to see it down there. Yeah, so we've got Al Hooley playing on Hill, which is a good matchup. Um, and Shinners is getting up high up the ground, probably on, looks like Ryan Allen. So they're two key matchups to keep an eye on, too. First time into attack, and we're in uh, seven and a half minutes into this grand final. Greenvale with the opportunity. Here's the opportunity for them. Brewer, Brewer. bursts through, kicks there first, score of the day, but he sprays it for a behind. I guess that's the other thing, too, Craig. When you get an opportunity, you've got to nail it. You know, first inside 50, first opportunity, missed. They've got to keep it in here now and get another shot on goal because it, 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 you get a counter play here and you're, you're three goals now. So the ball to come back in and they're going to go to the bowling club side. Good long kick. Look at that. Go on, good 65 metres. Plenty of players are in front of the footy and uh, the umpires fan are holding the man free kick going Greenvale's way. It's a big bloke, DeLuca. So DeLuca now, Fabian DeLuca. 
Bombs it long. Big mark needed here. Oh, big high fly over the top there. Umpires whistle on players. Marking interference, of course. It a marking interference to Aberfeldy, so they'll just chip it uh, wide here. <coughs> Virtually last line of defence for the Abbers. Blackwell it is. And they head towards that uh, bowls club wing. There's no, there's, that's a chance now for Greenvale. The kick comes into the corridor oh, area. But getting back on the foot is Jess Rush. Rush plays on straight away. The Abbas can't take it with them all the same. A kick off the ground. That opens it up. Running straight onto the foot is Al Hooley. It's in front. Hand passes it blindly. Across the pack. And Greenvale working well in defence here. But the little kick's not a great one. Sending it to the centre wing. Two out, Jewel. Brock McLean in front. Too Shepherds strong. beautifully. So it's going to be here they come. Jacob Hislop long into the forward line. They set themselves. No mark taking the big fellas there. Snapping towards goal. Misses everything over and out on the full Greenvale free kick. Last line of defence. Al Hooley off for a rest. Craven goes on. Craven will go to Hill. So they're going to double team, obviously, off uh, Hill down back today. As they bring the ball around that uh, outer flank. And that's out on the full. So uh, costly mistake there with a player on his own. It's Easy touched. turnover. It's touched in the end. That's a bit of a let off. It was. So the ball to be thrown in. Half forward flank out of side. Abbas in attack. McLean off and lower, just both off in midfield rotations. Up they go and over the back it comes. Little hand pass got smothered then. So a chance now for uh, Greenvale to go forward. Got some run going here. But they've got to make this ball worthwhile. They have. Sam Zumba kicks the ball long. It's going to bounce, but it's going to be like a five iron. And Josh Toy gets back on it there for Aberfeldy. He kicks the ball back out towards that outer side. Aberfeldy now. Once again, playing that outer side of the ground. So their width come in, the player talk about. They're giving good op options with plenty of width both sides of the ground. Doing it well at the moment too. So just uh, working the ball, taking plenty of time now. There's the kick. Chance here for the Abbas have got it at half forward again. Or oh, going in hard was uh, Fascioni. He's wrapped up, taken to the ground, forcing yet another ball up just outside the 50. Up she goes, and uh, they wrestle for position once more. Ben Angus Graham got the tap down, but Greenvale using a handball to try and get out of problems here. Little hand pass was nearly an underground one, but uh, sold his teammate into pressure. And into trouble, and it'll be a ball up. So you've got eight players for Abbas here behind the footy. Greenvale only got five players. Two have been taken to the stoppage. They're outnumbered heavily here, and they're really going to have to get a good forward structure or it's coming straight back. So Aberfeldy doing it well at the moment. They've won a free kick just outside the 50 here. So a chance now for Angus Graham. Another danger player for them. Front and centre he goes, the lead's on. Couldn't quite uh, complete the mark in the end. Allows the Jets in, but gee, Smith missed the hand pass. Has to recover, feeds it off. Gets out. Mark taken here. Abbas with the numbers, what can they do? Desperate stuff. Piling on top of it. In the back says the umpire and taking the free kick was Nana. Got on with it straight away. Hand pass oh. to the side. copped it. Right in the face. In fact, it wasn't, it was Josh Smith. So Smith at half back looks for a short one, finds James Rowan. Rowan now with the left foot delivers it long into the half forward flank. Wrestle on here. Oh, good work there. That was uh, Ryan Allen just out muscled his opponent on that occasion. There's the kick from Allen in towards centre wing. McLean's going to win the free kick. And paid it, advantage paid, and they get on with it straight away off the boot of Jess Rush. Kicks high to centre half forward. Nobody at all home. That's Smith again. And Smith getting a few touches in recent moments. Heads to the outer side, and they're away. But uh, where are the players on? Nana's in the middle of the ground. He's going to be under pressure. He's outnumbered two to one. And Aberfeldy now are able to come away with the football. Cross to J uh, Jacob Hislop. Long kick into the teeth. A goal over the back. It's rushed through in the end, through for a minor score there to Aberfeldy. Three on two deep there. Abbas really had to try and hit the scoreboard rather than kick to a contest. So, so they go quickly, repel the ball and bring it back into the play. Down the line they go. Chris Spinella has a footy. 
I mean, Greenvale have settled a bit better now. They've just had their hands on the footy a little bit more. They've just got to make sure they look after every possession at the moment. Working their way back into the game slowly, but they can't bleed too many more goals. Well done there by Josh Smith. Did it well. In the wood centre half. Or that's a little bit better from the Jets. Looking a bit more polished at the moment. A little bit more confidence. Chance here now for Adam Marrick. In the woods, the goals. Oh. Where he goes. Golly gosh, another opportunity missed. On that occasion, Tom Hill just overrunning it. Another fumble deep. Opportunity to score. Haven't made him pay yet. So it's a long kick out from that uh, behind, but there's a nice mark. So Greenfield will go forward again. They go out to that outer side, looking over there for Chris Pinella. Keeps the ball. No, he doesn't keep it in. It was very close to the line when he got hold of it and just couldn't bring it in. So it'll be a throw in on that outer side. Does that play on your mind when you miss those early opportunities, Craig? Yeah, look, it really, you just want you just want the guys to convert when you get an opportunity, particularly early in the grand final. You've got to make every opportunity count. Still half forward for Greenvale, unable to get a handle on it was uh, Chris Spinella. But what I will say, as I said earlier, Greenvale have settled now. They've, they've, they've won possessions. I think the numbers are probably back to probably 50-50 in terms of time in possession, and they're looking better. So 14 and a half minutes gone of the first quarter, and we're going to have another ball in. Three in a row over there, settling everybody down. So in it comes once more. Halfway through the quarter, you would think. And uh, Greenvale need to... Uh, Makes some scoreboard pressure here, but it's going to be Everfeldy. But again, team players from both teams spilling the ball. It'll be a ball up. So just on the attacking side of the centre square, right on the corner of it, actually a big thump away at Greenvale. Well, the hand pass was errant in the end. A little bit sloppy. Allows Aberfeldy and into towards half forward it comes. They sprint after the footy. Good piece of work, and that's a great goal. And they love it down there, Aberfeldy. The fans will be loving that, Kev. Yeah, boys, I'm down here at the Aberfeldy crowd, and they're going nuts. Have a look at them. Kick the first three goals, the Abbas. They're off to a flyer. And tell you what, this crowd down here is excited. Come on, get up, Aberfeldy. Back to you, boys. Uh, yeah, I just think then uh, Rep uh, Remus was able to get separation on Campesano. Campesano is going to be able to spool the ball every time it comes into a high ball, one-on-one -on -one with Remus. But Remus is dangerous and the ball hits the deck, and that's where Campesano can't afford to give him. Can't be trailing him with him with the footy. He's got to be in front, if not win his own ball, rather than let Remus win that ball. So what have Greenvale got? Can they get back? Handy little start to Aberfeldy here. Jets have had a few opportunities. Not made the most of them. The ball back in the centre, up it goes. Oh. Aberfeldy away again. Hand pass comes over. That danger man, McLean. Oh, good hand ball. Well done. Drew the uh, opposition, fed off a good hand pass. It's into the danger territory again here for Aberfeldy. Got it out quickly there. The Jets brew his kick was smothered. Tackling's hard and fierce. They lock it up at centre half forward. Still both sides still got the plus one behind the ball. Davis still for Rabbers and still Matt Smith for Greenville. So 3-1, 19 to 2 behinds as the uh, ball is tapped towards a bend and on Greenvale a chance here, but you've got to pick it up to get it off. And on that occasion it was tough for them and they didn't do it. Change on the bench, Davis off for Ryan Allen back on. So Ryan Allen will now be the plus one behind the ball for Rabbers. Played a great game against you blokes one day when we had you, Ryan Allen. Tried to, tried to tap over the back there. <laughs> Remember it. <laughs> Half forward here for Aberfeldy. Greenvale. Machewski kicked it high to centre wing. Oh, good strong grab over there by the man we were just talking about there, Ryan Allen. So Allen looks up to see what options he has on board. There's a few coins short. He's decided to kick long. They can take a mark here. It sets them up. Up they go. Instead of trying to take the grab, they were not wanted to knock it away. It's towards the boundary line for a throw in. So Blackwell and McLean are getting a little bit too much ball for my liking here in the midfield. They're winning ball stoppages. They're getting the ball on spread. I think you have to sit on one of them now. I think one of them's got to be shut down for a four or five minute period. Right in the teeth of goal here for Aberfeldy. Handy 17 point leaders at the moment. Coming up to the 18 minute mark, first quarter. Got the opportunity again. Blackwell drawing a free kick in a high tackle. And they should get another one from this. Well, it was... Uh... It was on, wasn't it? He just had to try and draw it, and he did so beautifully. Put his body on the line. Looks like he copped it pretty high and pretty hard. Well, a Sandover medalist, of course, so uh, 
knows how to play the game. Played a little bit at Carlton as well. Mm -hmm. So in he comes, Luke Blackwell. Puts the ball on its way, skips it in. Just does, that's their fourth goal on the board. Proud sponsors of the 2015 EDFL Final Series, Pre-Pack Cartons supply the printing industry with the right cartons at the right price. Custom sizes for custom carton needs. Call Pre-Pack Cartons on 9350 4700. Well, Aberfeldy, sparkling start for them. Greenvale with work to do, Craig. Yeah, look, they have, I think, um, they're going to have to get possession down. They're going to have to just maintain possession. It might mean a little bit of tempo footy, slow the game down a bit, but they've got to get the ball in their hands. Actually, it's 25 to 2 at the moment. Haven't upgraded our score there, but it is 25 to 2, and we've been playing uh, just over 19 minutes. Deluca won the uh, free kick for a shepherd in that ruck contest. Kicks into half forward. Oh, there's a high fire up there. It wasn't uh, paid the mark, though. Spills to the green. Had to be front and centre, but Eberfeldy were there to make the tackle. Little foot comes out. But it's Aberfeldy with it. Blackwell again. Kicks out wide. Got uh, Mark Lynch that's uh, the running on that uh, outer side. Goes back and they're going to uh, have plenty of time here. Delivering the ball across the ground. Finding Luke Blackwell once more. Straight he's, away across the ground. He's just carving them up at the moment, Blackwell. They can see it a bit of territory to gain some space. That was good stuff in the end. Marked here by uh, Jack McNamara. Knows how to kick a goal too. He's kicked 35 so far this season. Hand pass wide. Picks out Luke Davis, the co-skipper. For the Abbas, bursts his way through. Just handed it to Jake at his slop now. Swings onto his left foot. They set themselves. Fisted away in the end. Jets with the numbers here. If they can take it cleanly, they can't. Hand pass came out here to McLean. McLean in towards goal, goes bang. The Lee Abbas can do no wrong here in the first quarter. Magnificent handball from Caterpillar in traffic there. He saw McLean out wide, put the ball out in front of him. And McLean's finished from probably what's the toughest pocket to kick goals in local footy, and he's just finished that off beautifully. Yeah, it was straight through the centre, wasn't it? He didn't look like missing from the time that he had a look at the goals and where he was and just put it through. It was a great kick. So they go on to 5-1, 31 to two behinds only, Greenvale. It's only 20 minutes gone of this first quarter. Yep, not far away from the 21-minute mark, but gee, not the start that Greenvale would have wanted. High kick. Oh, and an easy mark. Used his body beautifully in the end, did Mark Lynch. Fed it off straight away. Running onto it, Zach Hislop. Oh, he got quick hands over here. Uh, the brother. kick into Woods. Cole to his brother. Just misses to the right. Point only. Good build-up, though, there. Oh, they're moving. They're, they're hunting the ball now. They're moving it quickly. They've got good spread. Greenvale just cannot hold the footy, and they cannot hang on to it and can't win it at a stoppage. Matthew Smith on that outer side. Just slowing it down because there's nobody to kick it to. So now he delivers and finds his teammate there in Christmas Nella. He plays on straight away and they run it through that centre wing position to a turnover. Not a great kick. And uh, Aberfeldy will be uh, rebounding quickly here or is it out of bounds? It's been, uh, oh, it's back 50, 50 metres. Metre. Huh? 50. Didn't see that one, but it must have been over the mark. So Paddock uh, hands the ball over. McLean coming from the ground for Cabillo uh, and Josh Toy looks like he's coming on for uh, Hislop. And they can afford to make quick rotations, can't they? Yeah. Brock McLean doesn't look as though he's even puffing. He's a great pass too. Another shot on goal here from 30 from goal. Beautifully done to Jake at Hislop. Just uh, showing the McLean pair of heels at the moment. Aberfeldy. A lot of people thinking this game could be a blowout. Let's hope they're not right for the uh, entertainment value. There's the kick. Oh. Falls a little bit short in the end. Could have been over the shoulder. Play on, said the umpire. They see it over and out for a throw in. You can see the scoreboard there. They've got to do something in the midfield here, Greenvale. They're just not getting enough ball. And I, uh, it's either shut down the opposition or it's go to more creative players through the middle. So they throw the ball back into play here at the back. Chance for Adam Marrick. His long kick sees it into the centre square area. But there's three to one here. And I'll tell you what, uh, doing extremely well back in there is Pathnopoulos, who uh, really held the footy up. And uh, just a little bit of a... Beg your pardons going on here. 
free kick going Greenway Vale's way. That was off the ball. And the umpire's on the spot. So oh, the ball's nice kicked nice. straight across to the centre wing. Careless disposal there, and they're just uh, letting themselves down a little bit at the moment. The Jets, they need a goal or two to get their confidence up. They won't get it with that. Just the opposite, in fact. Probably now, another but, one where they just needed to slow it down a little bit. They're trying to go fast break from there. They're outnumbered in their forward 50. They've got to slow it down. High kick up towards the centre wing. At the back, the big fella, DeLuca. Couldn't take the mark, though. Quick hands got it out here. And again, Aberfeldy with run round the wing from Lance Oswald. Kicks it up towards the uh, half-forward flank, just inside the line. Ben Clifton's there for uh, Greenvale, and they see it over and out. In front of a uh, heavily packed Reynolds stand. Yeah, they're getting a good view of this one. 24 minutes gone of the first quarter in the grand final for 2015. Over the back, Graham taps it. Free kick, though, is going to go Greenvale uh, for Aberfeldy's way. And uh, they'll, he'll line up for a shot at goal. The big fella, Angus Graham. Who's winning the battle so far there, Craig? Uh, look, because, um, from my viewpoint, because Abbots are so far on top through the midfield, their, their stoppage domination, I've got to give it to Graham. I haven't seen decisive tip, hit taps. There's the kick from Graham. Spears it through. Aberfeldy go further ahead. Prepack Cartons hope you're enjoying this live broadcast of the 2015 EDFL Final Series. For the right carton at the right price, call 9350 4700. Prepack Cartons, proud sponsors of the 2015 EDFL Final Series. Doing it easily at the moment, Aberfeldy. Quarter time, not far away, 25 minutes gone, first term. Yeah, six goals, two in the first quarter. They've really opened it up. Greenvale's gone small in the forward line now. Only Shinners is the only tall. Everyone else is small. So they're going to go forward, Greenvale. It was off the uh, boot that time of Adam Merrick. Into half forward, Mark Taken. Benello. Jared Benello. Gee, that's a good long kick. But can they take a mark here? They need it. Punched away beautifully. The fence. Very disciplined. Ball to the fence. Big crowd in there. Clapping the, the efforts of both teams. It's where those early missed opportunities can become so important absolutely. with your mindset. Yeah, absolutely. I think the Matt Smith loose thing, you know, I think it's it's not working defensively. I think I'd try and get him forward to the footy at the moment. Can they conjure a goal, the Jets? They need one. Again, the handling's not clean. Came over here off the boot of Zumbo in the end. He screws it back front and centre. Oh, whoa, could have been a high tackle. Umpire says it's OK. They pile in. He's letting it go. And they'll work it towards the line happily, the Abbas. Looked a bit high to me. I thought he got... he got. Uh, oh, he's played deliberately out of bounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a square up. <laughs> Possibly. That I doesn't think, happen, does it? I think Parthenopoulos was taken high at the bottom of the pack. The umpire missed it. Parthenopoulos probably overplayed it a little bit. But uh, lo and behold, he's played deliberately out of bounds. Well, Nick Marrick. It's a tough angle from here, too. Comes around, puts it on its way. Not a bad sort of kick. Put it through. The first goal on the board for Greenvale. They needed it. It's a great goal, really, really good goal. Probably equal to Roma's goal earlier, actually, and uh, it's good to see Greenville on the board. They've now got to uh, get back to back goals, not allow Abbas to score the next goal. Yes, if they get one straight back, it really hurts. Uh, Bre Brewers come off the ground and uh, Lowers back in the middle. So they've got Lower in the middle, Marrick in the middle uh, right now, and uh, Smith in the middle. So I know they've got two men in there now. As uh, Lower comes out of the middle, he's going to push forward. Oh, they jump high in the middle. Graham won the tap down. Can Greenvale get another one? Put a little bit more pressure on. Good work from Adam Marrick. Did it well. Threads through traffic. Deep in towards the forward line it goes. But again, the Abbas defence is too strong. Over the head of Oswald. Marked on the chest on that occasion by the dangerous Blackwell. Good vision. Goes in board. And they're away now. Brock McLean. The uh, veteran's doing it beautifully at the moment. That uh, kick a little wayward. Puts them under pressure. High yeah, good tackle. Decision. Good decision, too. He was trying to give a don't argue. Um, so, good, good, good umpire. I thought he was going to reverse it here. He has. He's reversed it. Just a little bit of undiscipline there, and uh, it's going to cost badly. They can, they can kick a goal from here. Well, Look. Jacob Hislop's just gone in short. And uh, the uh, mark, not pay, uh, mark not taken. So now Greenvale working hard in defence, but getting back there's Toy. 
Matoy wins the free kick. I think it may be Hislop. Seven. Yeah, it is. It is Hislop. Zach Hislop. Sorry, he's number seven and one. It's very similar. So that was just clumsy by Campanzano. He just didn't get low enough. And, you know, the last two free kicks have uh, got Abbas now within five metres of goal and a shot on goal. Zach Hislop. It's a pretty tight angle from the uh, worst part on the ground to try and kick a goal. Puts it on its way. It floats straight across and uh, doesn't score at all. So the ball have to come back here. Well, it's been a long time between premiership drinks for uh, Aberfeldy, but I tell you what, they're on track at the moment. Still a long way to go, of course, as the ball comes out here to James Rowan. Just chips it over short, trying to get a bit of run going. Burns with it now. Good kick. Goes inboard, well done to Smith. What can he do here? Good kick. And working it well now, better stuff. Benello sends them forward. Drives it long to half forward. Oh, nice mark. Great body use by... Uh... Nick Parfenopoulos. Oh, great body use. Good long kick by Benello. You know, when they've gone long and reasonably quick, and that's what I talked about pre-game, just put Abbas, even if they're outnumbering you, just put them under pressure, and they've been able to do it uh, again now. Abba Feldy well in control, but Greenvale now can uh, reduce the margin of four goals. So Parfenopoulos kicking from about 45 out from goal. He's directly in front. Pressure on with this kick. So he's taking time over it. Stutters a little. Puts the ball on its way. Not going to quite make the distance. Knocked through in the end. And it was a fraction offline as well. So they go on to 139. Quarter time not far away. 30 minutes played in this first quarter of the 2015 Grand Final. And it's been Aberfeldy's game so far as they head again towards that outer side. Toy's Good. gone lock with it, long with every kick in today. And it's uh, great to watch. Good long kicking. Ben Clifton trying to haul the ball in there. He's claimed. Taken over the line rugby style. What's happening here? It's going to uh, be a throw in, I think. Okay. Yep. Or a throw up. It's a throw up. Ball's thrown into the air. Very close to that boundary line over there. And I saw the boundary be umpire kick. run further down. That's why I was confused. They're very close. So now uh, Greenvale do own the footy. And the little Clifton. kick uh, goes in board. They fall <laughs> Nick Lower. But it's quarter time. And the scoreboard shows that Aber Aberfeld are in a commanding position. They're 6 2 38, Greenvale 1 3 9. Well, a great start to Aberfeldy and uh, putting yourself in the shoes of the uh, Greenvale coach, uh, Craig. What do they do here? Oh, look, I think I think they fought their way back into, into, into the game. I think they got a lot more ball. They had more forward 50 entries in the second half of the quarter. Aberfeldy were dominant for the first 15 minutes. Um, I think Greenvale have fought back. They probably should have made a little bit more of the last two forward 50 entries. But I'd be really trying to really hone in on those, op those positives. And really, we've got to get Matt Smith into the game if I'm coaching Greenvale now. He's sitting there as a plus one. He's defending well, but I need him more offensive. And we've got to get the ball inside the floor line quicker than we are. Great stuff. Special comments from Craig Clinic, the Strathmore coach. We'll be back with more of the action from Windy Hill shortly. You're watching the Essendon District Football League Grand Final live from Windy Hill. Premier Division 2015, Aberfeldy currently in control, 38 to 9. And uh, our man Kev's Murphy, Kev Murphy is, is uh, down at the huddle, so we'll go to him shortly. But, uh, well, a little bit of work for uh, Greenvale to do now, and uh, they're behind the eight ball. The coach would have to uh, give them a few home truths. Yeah, look, they, they, as I spoke about earlier, they've got to get the ball in stoppages. OK, Kev's down there at the Greenvale huddle. Down to you, Kev. Yes, thanks, Daryl. Well, we're going to take you uh, live into the Greenvale huddle, but uh, it wasn't a great start for Greenvale, obviously, in the first quarter. So much so that Shannon Grand didn't want us in there, and he let us know in our no certain unturned that uh, we had to get out of there. So uh, we had a bit of a listen. He's not very happy with their start. Obviously, Aberfeldy got off to a flyer. Uh, plenty of goals on the board. Uh, Greenvale only able to get their one... They've got to lift their, lift their intensity in this uh, second quarter. 
Um, Averfeldy, though, they're quite the opposite. Very happy with the way they've gone. Adam Potter is very positive. Uh, they're winning plenty of the ball. They're winning in all of the key areas so far. So it's just more of the same for Averfeldy in this second quarter. Back to you, boys. Thanks, Kev. And it's not the time Kev's been uh, coming out, of the, come out of the pack. <laughs> come out of knots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I think in line with his comments, I mean, uh, if I was Adam Potter, I'd be pretty pleased too. You know, you've started a started a, a, a grand final, kick 6-2 in the first quarter. That's ironed out any nerves or any concern about being 19-zip coming into a final, like a grand final. Uh, that's done and dusted now. So, you know, really, they, uh, they can actually now afford to probably relax a little bit, drop a little bit of intensity, not that you want it, but they actually can. Not necessarily be a, a, a passenger or a, or a uh, stationary uh, participant, but they can have a little bit of fun as long as they're disciplined, as long as they have good structures and win the ball at the stoppage. Their forwards are going to get plenty of opportunity here to, to kick a, uh, you know, a 15, 16, 18 goal uh, output for the game. And with Greenvale only on one goal, Greenvale going to have to roll a dice a little bit. You know, it's good to defend, and you defend well and keep Abbers to 10 at half time. But if you haven't hit the scoreboard, it's a long way back from there. Craig, Interesting, you... isn't it? Uh, Shannon Grant still speaking with his players in the yep. Greenvale huddle. Yep, the Abbas are out, all ready to go. Yeah, look, you get in these. What happens is you get into these zones in these moments. You're getting, you're getting team managers saying you've got to go. You're getting umpires blowing whistles, let's go. But you're in the zone, you're in the moment, and at times you don't hear anything. You are just that focused on delivering what you want to deliver here. And that'll be all about what he spoke about pre-game. That'll be about, this is how we said we were going to win the game. These are all the things we wanted to do. This is what we haven't done. Let's go back to doing that well, because he doesn't change his plan now. Craig, Putty's changed a lot in, uh, say, the last 40 years. It's, there's a lot more psychology involved these days. Absolutely. No, there is. There's a lot of psychology, a lot of man management. I've met, I've met many a great coach who wasn't a great man manager, and they tend to find it a bit more difficult. You know, you've got 60, 70, 80, 90 blokes on your list at a footy club, and you need to have some form of personal engagement with each and every one of them. They need to be managed differently. They need to be motivated differently. They need to be spoken to differently. They all learn in different ways. Some are visual, you know, some are good listeners. That's the challenge around local coaching, and I learned a lot about that, obviously, when I spent the 12 months at the Calder Cannons and the TAC, where I really learned about that firsthand, opposed to just good footy coaching. Fascinating stuff there. Special comments from Craig Clinic today, the Strathmore coach. Again, we have this problem at Windy Hill of uh, the crowd getting off the ground. Just have to file off one at a time through the gate. The hills, uh, there's plenty of people still trying to get off the ground and into the hill, and the stands the same. So they're slowly making their way off the ground. OK, looks like Lowe is going to Blackwell at the stoppage here. Um, which didn't happen in the first quarter. Um, we've got Brewer off the back. Brewer looks like he's going to Cabillo. Um, and it's still DeLuca v. Uh, um, Graham in the middle. Still got the plus one in play down here. We've got uh, Davis for Abbas, And we've still got Matt Smith, for, Matt Smith I should say, for uh, Greenville. So And we're away for the second quarter, and uh, this time it was DeLuca getting the uh, tap down. But uh, again, Aberfeldy, they're uh, in first for the footy. Little kick out, sees it further to the wing. Now it's Greenvale, a little handball over the top. Can they get some run and carry going here? One way, the other, and then this time Adam Marrick delivers the ball into half forward. Up they go, no mark with a whistle on play. Ooh. Greenvale free kick, they'll love this. Good and way to start the quarter. Well, I reckon Adam Marrick has had four inside 50 entries, and I reckon three of them have resulted on shots on goal. He gets good depth with his kick. He doesn't he doesn't rush himself and he gets the ball in. He's become the most dangerous player at the moment for Greenvale. So Nick Parthenopoulos with the opportunity to snare Greenvale's second goal inside the first minute of the second quarter. This one and another few quick ones would put them right back in the contest. Parthenopoulos. Only about 20 out. Skips in, puts it through. That's what they needed, an early goal in this second quarter. Very interesting, too, looking from that stoppage. Uh, Blackwell went to ground and hit the ball out into space. We had Oswald in front of us here. But if you look at the way the team spread, Greenvale spread five players this side of the ground. So Oswald outnumbered five to one here until he got help from, um, from uh, Kubilo and a couple others supporting at the line-up. So it was a good spread from Greenvale. All got, got numbers to one side of the ground and were able to win it. 
the ball back in the centre here. Greenvale. That goal though was their second for the day. This time it's Aberfeld. He threw McLean, kicking the ball out towards that centre wing position. Races on, got quick hands, gives it to Blackwell, looks around, has time, delivers into the half forward line. Good defensive work from the back, but quick recovery. Sees Abbas with the footy again in towards that pocket area. And uh, finally, it's uh, going to be out of bounds for a throw in. Kibillo just too strong out there. He took two blokes on, put them down, and then released by hand to give the ball to, uh, to Blackwell. He's a very strong guy over the footy. What Greenvale don't want is a quick answering goal from Aberfeldy here. I think DeLuca tapped it down. Anybody's footy at the moment, though. It's a tough one to win. They pile in. The umpire says, give it to me. So Abbas have got their Ruckman behind the footy, along with uh, their loose player behind the footy. So they've got two numbers behind the ball here. So uh, just a tussle on for the footy, showing strength. The ball's going nowhere. The umpire says, I'll have it. And throw it up. So up she goes, umpire Brown. Got it away, but Aberfeldy he come out with the football. And now the kick goes long in towards the half-forward line. Off that packet was taken, but they, they just couldn't get away with the footy again. <laughs> Aberfeldy retrieve it once more. The tackles are laid, and it goes nowhere. Zach Hislop was claimed. Tap down there, it's a tap. In the forward zone here for Aberfeldy. Greenvale trying desperately to work their way back into the game. And I'll see it over the line and out. In front of a very big crowd in that uh, left forward pocket. But there's a few characters over there. So Greenvale have got Abbas outnumbered by two at this stoppage. Yet Abbas seem to be le releasing the ball too easy from a stoppage being outnumbered. So the ball on the ground once more. And the umpire has no alternative but to ball it up. We're about 35 metres out from goal. And uh, again, a lot of players around the football taking it was Cubello. But uh, Greenvale trying to do something with fresh air. Kicks to the umpire. Aberfeldy's free kick. They're going to line up for goal. Just smart there. Look, Cubello went up in the ruck. He's a, he's a midfielder. He took the ruck contest, took it out, really out of the air on his own. Fed the ball out. Brewer won it below his ground and miskicked it. And they got a free kick and a shot on goal. Just created something from nothing. Josh Cubello, well played. He's got a good spring on him. He's not a bad size either. So Zach Hislop looking to extend Aberfeldy's lead. Skips in. Oh, that's, he shanked that one. He's just snuck through for a point in the end. Bit of a let off there for Greenvale. Looking for their first premierships since 1974, Aberfeldy, Four after a couple of recent near misses. 41 years. It's a long time between drinks is now Greenvale go to that outer side it's over the back of the pack Aberfeldy first to recover here They've had plenty of time this is the uh, way that the game's been played so now the little kick goes uh, inboard he's looking for Al Hooley there comes over the top but taking Oswald, it was Marrick Marrick he's well done another long kick a good long kick towards a half forward line oh clash of bodies there's a bit of uh, guts and determination taking the ball as the ball comes across the ground Davis got it, and then they flicked it over. A little bit of run happening now, and they've got players everywhere on their own. Taking the mark was Patak. Wayne Paddock now. Long in towards oh. half forward. Good, strong grab. Beautifully taken there. It's Graham By the big forward. fella, Angus Graham. Just too tall. That's why he's so dangerous, what you were talking about earlier, Craig. Absolutely slid forward. Fat side of the ground. They've kicked the ball on top of his head there, and uh, DeLuca wasn't close enough to him to be able to give, even give a contest. So here he is, I think, shooting for goal number two inside five minutes of the second quarter. This is a bit I said Greenvale have to stop happening. Angus Graham, he's kicked one. This will take the lead to five straight goals if he can thread this, puts it on its way. Never a problem. Straight through the middle. Oh, DeLuca's giving him one in the back of the head. And, uh, oh, he's got one to go. He's going to get another kick. Play. Yeah. We'll have another kick. So players running in from everywhere. He's up though, he's fine. I don't know whether it was as bad as it looked. It was a uh, an elbow, I think, maybe to the shoulder. Um, well, the umpire hasn't seen it severe enough to report, so it's it's just clearly a high tackle. He's getting another kick. Another kick. Well, that's uh, that's what they don't need. Greenvale. 
I know, it's, I know he's frustrated to Luca, but you know, this is not what you want. Um, you know, he's, he's, as I said, he's kicked two inside half time, shooting for goal number three, back to back goals. To look at it, had to be better than that. Angus Graham coming in for the eighth goal of the day to Aberfeldy. Puts it on its way, he's making them pay. Good goal, that's his third. Doesn't happen too often, two goals without the ball going back to the centre. Jeez, look, at, look at him against uh, Mark Lynch there. Remus comes from the ground uh, in a rotation. Um, Kibilo's off the ground as is Al Hooli and uh, Oswald. Um, I'd be interested to see this contest here, what DeLuca's going to give. I mean, he's just, given him, he's just given away a goal. He really needs to bring this contest for his team. So the two big fellas in the middle again. Graham won it. Loose footy at the moment, though. Attack couldn't burst his way through. Marrick did. Did it well. They sprint after the footy there. Sato keeping it ahead of him. Did well. Has it at half forward. Fed off the hand pass. Anticipation was good. Lower directory hand pass from lower. High kick. All Aberfeldy back there. They collide. Here's the opportunity for Greenvale. Long kick in towards goal by Nick Marrick. Just misses to the left. Tom Hill, Tom Hill was very good in crashing that pack a minute ago. He had to go and he went and crashed the pack, which created the loose ball for Marek to feed off. Yeah, they needed that one, though. Another chance gone begging. 51 plays 16. Remus has just snuck back on the ground here with uh, his lock coming off. So the big, long kick goes outside the 50-metre arc. Going to fall Aberfeldy's way. Little kick didn't travel very far at all. <laughs> they duck their heads. That was Mark Lynch. Comes up with a footy and gives it back to the umpire. Remus is still on his own inside the boundary line just here. It's a battle royal between those two big blokes in the ruck and they don't get very far with that one. The way the tackling is these days, Craig, that must hurt when you get tackled like that. Bone crunching? Yeah, no, the, the boys tackle well now. They've been taught it. It's another technique in the game that's gone to a new level. How to tackle effectively. Take the body out. Balls at half forward here for Greenvale. Can they conjure something? Nana screws it back front and centre. G flying high there was uh, Tom Play Hill. On. Play on. Oh, oh, into an open goal by Parthenopoulos. And it misses. Goodness gracious me. Blackwell off. Kubilo back on. Kubilo's ducking down here trying to be the loose player at the back. Hill, what an intercept on a kick in. Yeah, Tommy Hill. He uh, read the play well. The ball was going to go to Josh Toy, no matter what. He read it beautifully and will line up for a shot at goal. Tough pocket here. Has 55 goals for the year. He's a goal kicker. It's a tough one from here, though. In he comes. Hill puts a ball on its way. Educated yep. kick. They like it down there. Goal umpire gives both fingers. Great kick. What the doctor ordered for Greenvale. Just keeps them in the net within striking distance. What about the way, just a little earlier, Tommy Hill uh, flew for the foot. He can get off the ground, can't oh, he? He took a mark last year, or uh, last week, I should say, in the final. He, uh, he put his foot in the middle of the guy's back and stood upright. It was an amazing mark for a big fella. I mean, he's got to be 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he uh, really knows how to mark overhead. So Greenvale edging their way back. But they've got to get some unanswered goals. They've got to string a few of those together and again. The Abbas surge forward, in towards half forward. Sun shining now here at Windy Hill. Quickest to recover down there was uh, McNamara. Gets grabbed as he got his foot to the ball. Long hand pass came out to Patak. He's playing straight away. Ball yells the crowd. Great tackle, Smith. Umpire says yes, free kick. So now it's Smith. From the half-back line, looks around. Josh Smith's kick goes across the ground. Oh, I've got to keep your eye on the footy. So now the recovery was there, luckily. Back to Smith, and he takes the mark. So Josh Smith, from the half-back line, delivers the ball to the wing. Nice kick, nice lead. Trent Shinner's coming out to accept it. So Shinner's now. Kicks long. Oh. Mark required, but they've got the wrong colours on. It's an Aberfeldy mark. No, he's called a block in the air. It's a free kick to Greenbar. OK, so... Uh, chance here for the Jets. 
What can they do? Big mark needed here. They set themselves. Abbas have the answers at the back. They bring the ball around the uh, pavilion side. All on his own down there is Zach Hislop. Just in a rotation, just a rotation off the bench, which got him out on his own there. Like was a fortune. So the ball goes back into the uh, corridor area, across to Toy. Toy delivers it wide. That's spread again. They have the footy. Oh, good uh, smother that time by Parthenopoulos. Can he kick it up? Get the handle on. He's got to get around. Throws it out in front of himself. Then dives on top of the footy. Umpire's going to uh, pay against him. Just didn't do enough early with that one. Free kick going. Abba felt his way. <laughs> Bit of shenanigans trying to draw the reverse. Didn't happen. Angus Graham's playing good footy. Here he is working hard down back. Before he's working hard forward. He's getting good ground coverage here. He's well on top. He's been fantastic so far in this game. Kick was good too, wasn't it? Yeah, doing it nicely at the moment. Hislop with the footy. No, in fact, is that? Yep, Zach Hislop. Good high kick. Out of wing. Greenvale mark. James Rowan, great mark. The veteran James Rowan. So Rowan looking to uh, see where he's going to direct the footy with the left foot. Puts it up. They were looking for a high flyers, but they just had to judge it best. And that's what they did back there. Just waiting down there was uh, a Ryan Allen. Alan. Alan Ryan, Alan again, and a uh, and 50. 50. Greenvale have just got to lower their vision and look a bit lateral when they're coming forward. Abbott's got too many players beyond the ball. You cannot be bombing the ball in long without... You need, you need to be building that ball up to get the ball inside forward 30. Ball goes across, and uh, it's going to be Aberfeldy to go forward through Jess Rush. Into that forward pocket. No, there's a good mark. Joshua Cabello. He's a good leader, isn't he? Super. Playing well again. Midfield and forward. He's impacting wherever he is. Nice camera angle on this kick at goal. Aberfeldy already have eight goals on the scoreboard. Josh Cabillo looking for his first. Puts it on a tray. Oh, oh. Straight yeah. through the middle. Great piece of work. Amazing goal. As we go down to Kev. Yes, boys, I'm down here in the Reynolds stand. And I've got supporters both from Aberfeldy and Greenvale. But the Greenvale, Greenvale supporters haven't got much to cheer about. Uh, the Aberfeldy supporters certainly do. But uh, watch for this stand later on in the day. Because if this game can get close, if Greenvale fight back, this place is going nuts, boys. Back to you. Yes, got a little bit of work to do at the moment, though. The Jets, handy lead to Aberfeldy. So the uh, Ruckman go at it again, and that time uh, it was uh, Greenvale. But uh, McLean, Brock McLean, fends it off. Just a little kick goes inboard. Blackwell there, Luke Blackwell gives it back to McLean. They're combining beautifully together. Ring a ring a Rosie with the hand passing. Makes it easy for them to get clear and then deliver the ball out towards that centre wing position. Going uh, forward is just Rush. Rush's kick is long. Defensive punch from behind by Greenvale defence, but here's a chance for them. Ka uh, Carboni turns around and kicks the ball inboard, but he missed the target. Getting back on it's Matty Smith. The semi-final these guys played in two weeks ago. This final score was 3-6 to 10-14. Uh, we're uh, looking like have a substantial higher scoring game than that. And, uh, and uh, Greenvale need to start hitting the scoreboard. Yes, they need to start clawing their way back. Chance there for Nick Merrick. Struck the tackle, got it off. Ball bounces in front of uh, David Sardo. Did it well. Kicks high. Tom Hill's there. One against two. Whoa. Unlucky not to draw the kick around the body from Joe Gazza. High up in towards the goal square. But they've got all the answers back there. Luke Davis taking the mark for Aberfeldy. He's off straight away. Feeds off the hand pass. Cops it back, though, with the 1-2 and now delivers in towards the centre wing position. Blackwell's there. Hands it over to Lynch. They'll run through that centre wing position easy enough. Josh Cabello. He takes a bounce. Kicks long in towards half forward. Man behind! Great mark, that. Alistair Kefford. And he already has a goal to his name. So Kefford, he's kicked 44 for the year. Knows where the goals are. Skips in. 
Looking good, it's gone across the face of goal. Off hands in the end, sneaks through for a point. The Lucas come from the ground for a rest, so they must be going to put Shinners in the ruck now. Um, try and get something different through the middle. I think Tom Hill's one that's got to be considered to get him in the game a little bit more, maybe put him through the middle. So the ball will be brought out from full back, this time coming to the stand side. Bit unusual, that. So uh, this time, it's still Aberfeldy. A little hand pass came out to Josh Smith. Across he goes to Marrick, and Adam Marrick got around an opponent and then delivers it beautifully there to Sardo. Has time, delivers long looking go there for Tommy Hill. Has the mark. He'll line up for a shot at goal. Marrick again started that chain of play here on halfback. Um, he has been their most Instrumental. Well. Absolutely. Hill certainly thought momentarily about running off then, but uh, thought better of it. So Tom Hill. Well, this is a tough pocket, but they've kicked them from here already today. So let's see what he can do. Trying to add to his 58 goals for the season. Tom Hill. They need this one, Greenvale. Puts it on its way. It's going to float away. Saw that a lot last week here. Always does. You've got to punch it low, that end. It just it gets up high, just pulls left every time. Well, 18 minutes gone, second term. Can Greenvale get closer before the long interval? So uh, this time it's going to be uh, Campazano. Oh, sorry. Sorry, in fact, it was Toy that kicked the ball out. They go uh, to uh, the outer side, keeping possession. Ryan Allen, great mark. Yeah. He's been good. Now he uh, delivers a footy towards the... Is that Lynch? No, that's Oswald. Uh, Osborne. Oh, Lance Oswald. He's on the uh, centre wing position, decides to go back in board. It's Allen again. Just trying to set something up here, Aberfeldy. Allen now. Kicks long towards the uh, outer wing. Oh, the hands of the pack. Bounces over and out. He'll be thrown in again. In front of the Strathmore Community Bank sign, they've been such great supporters of local footy again in 2015. In it comes. And uh, it was punched to the side of the pack. Aberfeldy with the footy. It's a uh, high one. Alan was it again, or Laurie? It was Laurie. Got it across. They keep running that through here on the half forward line using hand passing Lynch to Paddock. perfection. Paddock's kick goes into half forward. No mark there. You had to be front and centre. Getting the footage, Nick Marrick. They'd paddle the ball in front, but you've got to be able to pick it up. Moving the ball down oh, the ground. Applied. That was Burns. They got some run here. Sam Zumba. Kicks, Zombo kicks the ball along to that whole outer side. Marrick's there. He's in front. Oh, oh, hit the ground. Hit the ground. Needed to keep his feet. And they bring the ball out again easily on and that again, centre wing. Again, it's all Aberfeldy out there too. Going in short. Opportunity there for Roswell. Coming right into the game now. Spilled over towards Blackwell. Blackwell's kick wobbles towards the boundary line and they see it over and out. Gee, that was a promising build-up from Greenvale then, but came to nothing. Again, make the most of these opportunities, you know. They've probably been inside 57 or 8 times for no score in this quarter. Ball thrown back into play, and uh, again, uh, getting under there is Luke Blackwell. Free kick, whistle on play. It's going to be an Everfeldy free kick. Greenvale. Oh, Greenvale yep. free kick, sorry. Josh Smith. Smith now. Virtually last line of defence there for the Jets. She went through the hands of Zumbo. Allows the Abbas in again. Bit of kick-to-kick -kick happening at the moment. Great mark from Lower. They're working hard as Nick Lowe boots it in towards the middle of the ground. Now they've got a little bit of time and space. Hill the target. Goes over his head. Oh, good piece of work there. But they can't quite uh, pick the ball up cleanly. Doing it, uh, doing it well was Jesse Laurie. And they'll come around this grandstand win now with a bounce. Fed off nicely on that occasion by Phillips. Oh, <laughs> grab with the footy was Nick Catapan. He's claimed, and off with it now is Nana. Yeah, Rowan Nana puts it into the forward line. Nice kick, good lead. Joe Gazzo. Geez, that was very pl well played by Laurie before from Abbas. He had to win that ball. Loose ball hit the ground. Awkward bounce. One on two, and he was able to do it. And he's a 50-metre penalty for Gazzo. Now yeah. they have to convert that's from a, here. That's against the water boy from uh, Aberfeldy. Oh, gee. How would that be cost you a premiership? Wouldn't like that one bit, but Joe Gazzo now directly in front. This will be a certain fourth goal of the game to 
Greenvale got it on the way. I'm Phil from the Strathmore Community Branch of Bendio Bank. If you do your banking with us, you can rest assured that the profits we generate will be put back into the local community. We contribute 80% of our profits back into the local community. Last five or six minutes, you know, I think uh, Blackwell and McCoyne have been a little bit quieter. Um, Graham was dangerous early and probably hasn't had a lot of ball in the last four or five minutes. To what Gre you said, they had time to just slacken off a bit, and they have. They have, and uh, what have we got, five goal margin. Uh, it's game on. 22 minutes gone, game on, says Craig Clinic. Let's hope so. Greenvale again going forward in the sunshine here at Windy Hill, but good piece of work on that occasion, again by Rush. And they'll come away. This time through Paddock, he's been in plenty of it. Little short pass, picks out Cabillo. Draws the hand pass, gave it over towards Lynch. Lynch from oh, the centre. Beautifully done, like a training run then, Aberfeldy taking the mark with Zach Hislop. Too easy. Um, and that would be very disappointing to Shannon Grant, that bit of play there. Greenville haven't touched the footy from a centre clearance. Three players he could have picked that ball, picked to kick that ball to, and here he is, uncontested mark, 30 metres from goal. But I tell you what, doesn't Zach... Hislop getting to the right place in that forward line. Terrific, uh, very smart, very clever, and historically a good finisher. He had a shot earlier and kicked it on the full, but let's see if he can make amends here. So in comes Zach Hislop in the number seven Guernsey. This time he finishes better. The tenth goal on the board for the day to Aberfeldy. And here's a challenge for Greenvale right now. You know, they've, they've, they've kicked goals to get back in this game today, and then Abbas have just gone bang with the next goal. And... Challenge for Greenvale now is to be able to kick back-to-back -back goals. While they've got to stop Abba's scoring, as I said earlier, they've got to hit the scoreboard with consecutive goals just to reduce that margin and give themselves a chance later in the day. Special comments coming to you from the Strathmore coach, Craig Clinic. With Abba Feldy. Four goals clear now. The ball's thrown up in the sunshine here again. Loose footy. Greenvale. Up against it. Good piece of work from Cabillo. And they're away again. Oh. Paddock. Gee. So what's happened here is McNamara's gone in the ruck. They've pushed Graham to the goal square, which has mean Camposano's had to go to Graham. He's probably given away, gee whiz, four inches, five inches. Feeds off the hand pass. Big kick in towards goal. Misses to the right. A very comfortable lead at the moment to Aberfeldy. We've been playing 24 and a half minutes. They could have stuffed this up here as the uh, ball was short. Didn't hit a target. Locked up for a ball up. 24 and a half minutes gone. And uh, Graham gets a tap down this time. But uh, taken was Daniel Burns with the footy. Little kick was smothered that time. Chance now for the Abbas again. Little hand pass, but it went to the opponents. And now it bounces awkwardly in the centre of the ground. Underneath is Jesse Laurie. Fumble. Didn't get a handle on it, but who did? Adam, Adam Marrick fed it off. And Stephen Brewer now kicks oh. down to half forward. But Josh Toys right underneath the footy. Takes it easy. Good yeah. structure from Abbas. Three numbers beyond the ball. Well played. And uh, Toy runs around his opponent and boots over towards the centre wing. Off hands. Nick Catapan won't stop it from going over. It'll be thrown in on the outer side of the ground. Good spall, Bonello there. He closed speed well. He closed uh, space really well. Got a hand on that to uh, to really neutralise the ball in the centre wing. Big DeLuca in the ruck here. Couldn't get near the footy, though. He shepherded it out a little bit. Uh, quick kick by Hislop. Sees it forward for Aberfeldy. Little knock on there. Trying to open something up. And the umpire has paid a free kick. Going, Aberf uh, going Greenvale's way. So the Jets, under pressure. They've got support over there in the form of Nick Lower. But once again, they're unable to keep possession. Need to get something from this uh, forward 50 entry. They need a good setup forward of the ball. They should be able to dominate this stoppage given you've got DeLuca here on McNamara. McNamara's undersized in the ruck. DeLuca should be hitting this ball down the midfielder's throat. Can they do something? Half forward here for Greenvale. They need a goal before half time and a couple. Scrambly over there at the moment, and the umpire has no option but to call you, for a baller. You were saying what they should have done, did they do it? Uh, well, he got his hand on the footy, but there was no one got inside for the tap. I don't know that they had a good, uh, a good structure at that stoppage. So up she goes once more, wrestle again in the ruck. This time uh, it's Ooh. Nick Catapan 
It, it, uh, they hand it off and now they're going to run it. Josh Toy takes a bounce, has some speed and the kick towards the half forward line. Two out duel here. Oh, nearly a nice mark. Kyle Rumis just couldn't quite hold on, but recovers, taps it out, gives it across to Rush. Rush lines up the goal, kicks long. Graham's there and takes the mark. Big Angus Graham, he's a handful. What's his shooting for number four? Yep, four goals. I think Shinners needs to go back while Graham's forward. I think he's a, I think he's a better option. Um, Clifton and Camposano are too undersized to play on uh, Graham forward. So Angus Graham for goal number four. Won't miss from there. Pops it through. As I call, uh, Shinners comes on the ground. Looks like Shinners is heading back. Um, so someone from the back half is going to slide 40. I think Shinners will go to Graham if Graham stays forward. It's all reactionary at the present time for that Greenvale. Is, it is, yeah. You know, look, they've got Smith in the middle now. Uh, they've got Marrick in the middle and they've got Brew in the middle. They've got DeLuca in the ruck. It's, it's, it's their as good greatest as it can time. get. It's their greatest time to shine right now with forward 50 entries and shots on goal. Ball back in the centre. 41 point lead to Aberfeldy. Nearly 28 minutes gone, second quarter. Mar Half time not far away. And again, they surge forward. Paddock got the hand pass off. Long kick, deep into attack. That'll bounce through off the boot of Nick Catapan. What a magnificent goal. Huge kick. And I tell you what, they're starting to get their hands firmly around that Premiership Cup. Aberfeldy. It's opened up now. What have we got? I've got an eight-goal ball game here, uh, I think. I think um, changes need to be made. And we go down to Kev. Yes, boys. Uh Big man Tom Hill for Greenvale has got an obvious sore shoulder coming off, obviously carrying it, and got barrelled by an Aberfeldy player on his way off. Doesn't look too good. Watch for him. Thanks, Kev. Kev Murphy down there inside the boundary at the 2015 Grand Final. Greenvale now trying to make something happen. Good long kick by Marrick in towards Nainer. He punches it back cleverly. Oh, look at this. There's steam rolling through. Toy, body on the line. Hand pass came out. That was from Davis. But it's half time and the scoreboard shows Aberfeldy 12 5 77. Greenvale 4 6 30. Good lead to Aberfeldy. Well, as I say, they're uh, grip tightening on that Premiership Cup. Craig Clinic, how did you see that first half of football? Well, I guess, you know, you come to a grand final and you want a really close, well, well fought, tight grand final. I, I think at parts of the game we've had that, the grand final, it's opened up to an eight goal margin. I think they're well on their way, Aberfeldy. And welcome back to Windy Hill for our direct coverage of the 2015 Grand Final. Essendon District Football League. Aberfeldy uh, doing it very well against uh, Greenvale at the moment. Those um, donut stacks, the sugar on them is not good, is it? <laughs> Just broken a record for the <laughs> quickest time to kick a, uh, to eat a, a donut. Yeah, that's probably true too. But uh, well, they just about got the sprint on. The sprint's happening down there. Kev's uh, down there. He's going to get the winner uh, in a minute if he's got enough breath. That's the winner, not Kev. And they're off and running in the grand final sprint. Reminds me of the old dandy dollar dash. Benny, remember that? Oh, it was a great uh, thing for VFA footy. This is called the dash for cash. Remember Norman Yen won a couple of those? I'll tell you what, the guy that was out in front, number six, I think he's starting to die. He's holding on at the front, but they're going to come over the top of him, I would think. Well, last week, of course, it was a great finish, and uh, the bloke that was in front near the line just got claimed. I don't reckon uh, 400 would be your forte, would it? No, I was more a long-distance man myself. I thought it'd only be about 20 metres sprint, and that's it. <laughs> that's these days. <laughs> Here they go, eh? Look at that. The Avondale Heights folks just claiming him, claiming him. It's between those two, he's got it one. And you held on beautifully. Plenty of support there as well. What about the bloke in the Abbas jumper? He didn't obviously play in the seconds. <laughs> you know, he's the, the leftovers. He's trying to win something in the uh, in the sprint. He might be their sprint coach. <laughs> OK, so uh, Kev's down there. He's just waiting to grab the uh, grab the winner, but that was the dash for cash. Quite sure how much it, uh, it actually is worth. But a little bit of uh, extra colour and entertainment for... Uh, 
the crowd here on grand final day. So that's uh, Kevin Donnelly there, the uh, ground announcer, <laughs> who does a fantastic job here at the UDFL Grand Finals. Yep. So, uh, got a greener while a mile wide there. And we'll just wait for uh, Kev will grab me in a moment. He's got to get his photo taken and all the rest of it. The shadows of the stand there, shadows starting to creep across the ground here at, uh, at Windy Hill. But the sun is shining. It's a magnificent day. Yeah, and, it sure uh, is. It, it, in fact, it's got better as the day's gone on. We had a bit of rain even before the game. It wasn't heavy rain, but it did cover the ground. OK, so uh, Kev's down there with the winner. Down to you, Kev. Yes, boys, I've got Tom from West Coburg. Tom, it's not quite the Olympics out here, but uh, tell you what, the atmosphere in that last 50, that must have been pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was running around across there, and the others, boys, were getting pretty excited, so yeah, it was good to run in front of that many people. It was Obviously, you're not uh, necessarily playing in the big game this no. afternoon, but getting an opportunity to run in front of this big crowd it must have been exciting nonetheless. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. A bit, bit of nerves down in the rooms down there, but yeah, it was good to get in front. And... Uh, did you hold the hopes of the club? Uh, you know, have they been getting into you all week? You're representing your club. Has there been a lot of talk, a bit, a lot of build-up uh, on social media about your run today? No, we tried to keep it a bit on the bit on the down low, just, you know, not talk us up too much. But, yeah, it's good to get the win anyway. Yeah. Well done uh, today, Tom. Uh, live in Melbourne and Geelong, uh, not just here at Windy Hill. You're a winner. Well done. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much, Kev. Kev Murphy, he's never run that fast in his life. No, he hasn't, and he would, but he wouldn't want to try and go the 400 either, would he? You know, he, used to, he used to do a 400 as a wind down, like one slow lap to go off. <laughs> Doing a great job down there, no doubt about that. Well, Craig, uh, we asked you just before the break um, how you saw that first half. Can you see uh, Greenvale being able to get back and make a game of this? Look, I'd like to. I th I'd like to see a uh, well-fought-out second half, and I'd like the game to be back back alive and back back on. What you don't want as a spectator now uh, and as a footy club is this game just to become a blowout. You, you really don't want that. You want you want to see a, a well-fought-out grand final. I, I, I think Greenvale are going to have to make some changes. I think they've uh, they've been able to eliminate Remus from impacting, you know, as much as they, they would want him to, uh, as Abbas would want him to. I think they've uh, closed down um, their smaller forward options at, at times. Graham's been a real handful for him, both in the ruck and when he's got forward. Abba's midfield have been well on top, you know. Paddock's had a lot of footy. Blackwell and uh, McLean's first quarters were, were scintillating, uh, and they were in and out of the game that quarter. Abba felt his half-back line's been dominating, and I think Greenvale really need to get a target to kick to. They need a beacon just to be able to put the ball on top of somebody. Their small forwards look... They look uh, dangerous. They look like they can outrun their Aberfeldy opponents. But Abbas are outnumbering them in their forward line. So when the ball comes in slowly or the ball comes in, let's say, not as well when it comes in quickly and it's not kicked to a good spot, Abbas are able to just mop it up. When there's two and three on ones and they're able to get the ball back through the middle of the ground. Yes. So I think there needs to be a couple of, a couple of changes made. I'd, I'd like, probably like to see Hill, Hill maybe go on the ruck, maybe get Deluca to centre-half forward, maybe kick the ball to Deluca, get uh, some smalls around him. I think Marek's been good in the middle. He's probably given them... You know, more than uh, Brewer has and more than Nanya has and probably more than Lower has at times. So they've got, to get, they've got to get one or two more winners through the midfield and they've got to get some winners across our forward to get themselves back into this game. And they've just got to be able to find how to get the pressure off them because I think the Aberfeldy just... The extreme pressure all the time. Whichever part of the ground you're in, they're just putting their opposition under pressure. The Abba's really back the player going uh, in a one-on-one -on -one with his direct opponent to win that, and they set up offensively from that situation around the ground. So the challenge here really is Gr Greenvale have got to win one-on-ones. Prepack Cartons hope you're enjoying this live broadcast of the 2015 EDFL Final Series. For the right carton at the right price, call 9350-4700. Prepack Cartons, proud sponsors of the 2015 EDFL Final Series. And all set to go in the second half here at Windy Hill. Very, very handy lead to Aberfeldy with only two quarters of football to be played. That, uh, that wind's really picked up here now too. You can see the, the trees down behind the, uh, oh, yes. the scoreboard there. It's picked up. Uh, looks like it's blowing sort of down towards the, uh, the uh, swimming centre down there. So there could be uh, a real uh, advantage to attacking this end down this, this uh, side of the ground this quarter. So Greenvale, ne Greenvale needing to make the most of this. Well, they've got to kick eight goals to get back in front without uh, Aberfeldy yeah. kicking one. It's a very, big very ask. big ask. 
Kabilo's gone to Marrick in the middle of the ground. So can Green Bale get back in this third quarter? They call it the championship quarter. The big fella took it out of the air on that occasion. So now it's going to be uh, McLean that kicks the ball towards a half forward line. Oh, doing it brilliantly on that occasion. Jack McNamara lines up the goal, but he's well offline. The breeze pushing it across. As Craig mentioned just earlier there, that uh, the wind has sprung up, and that's a good instance of it. So the ball will be kicked back into play. Half forward here for Aberfeldy. Good long kick, deep in towards the pocket. No mark taken. They battle for possession. There's the opportunity. Oh, could have been a high tackle. Play on, said the umpire. They bottle it up right at the end of the goal square here. That'll be a ball up. Some good pressure down deep there from Greenvale. Abbas were away. They had Hislop out. They had a couple of other players out, but they were able to put some good defensive pressure on. Up they go. Look at this. Oh, really in the rack high. A quick kick by Angus Graham and a knock through in the end. Another behind on the scoreboard. There's the kick out. Brewer, great kick. It was a good kick from Stephen Brewer, and they're away now. Oh, gee, open territory here. Oh, they messed it up. Campesano overran the footy. Oh, goodness me. Another opportunity oh. lost, and Aberfeldy oh. making the most of that. Couple of little dummies sold in towards half forward, and there's the mark taken on the chest by Jack McNamara. Fed off the hand pass straight away. To Paddock. Paddock's long kick right up into the teeth of goal. Floats across through for a point. So Aberfeldy doing plenty of attacking early in this third quarter as the little kick comes out to Chris Fasciani. Fasciani now uh, looks across the ground. This could be dangerous. Oh, oh. could have taken a mark. Joshua Cabello into the open goal. They go now. Kick by Carl Remus. Puts it straight through their 13th goal. Well... They, uh, they just fiddled around a little bit too much. Yeah, look, I think uh, Burns down in front of us here. He had to grab the footy. He was trying to create something. Oh, They've given another free kick down, down the goal square here, I think, um, against... Oh, he's been yellow carded. Daniel Burns is starting to unravel now for Greenvale. They'll be playing one short. Do they play short? Yeah, he's been uh, yellow carded, so he'll be off for uh, 15. Um, that'll be one player short for 15 minutes. So it gives Kyle Rumus a chance to kick another goal. So this will be the second time where there's been a free kick awarded when the ball was going back to the centre today. Yeah, and both times to Aberfeldy. Absolutely. Hard enough kicking a goal. So Kyle Rumus. The second time this has happened today, two goals without the ball going back to the centre if he threads this. It's already kicked two. Shouldn't miss from there. He does. <laughs> Off the side of the boot. Point only. Hit the post. So Matthew Smith, no, no, he hands it over. Brewer kicking in. Goes yeah. to Smith. Yeah, he does go to Smith. Didn't get much out of that. Guess they had nothing on to kick long putting themselves under pressure here. So it's now called to play on, so now they've just popped it up. High flyers wanted. Up they go, oh, and there's one good mark. Great taken. mark, DeLuca. Great mark. Fabian DeLuca kept his eyes on the footy. They need more from him like that. Wanted to move it quickly, but uh, just a little slow. Now he's been asked to play on by the umpire. Floats it into the centre. Two uh, Greenvale players... They uh, didn't help themselves. Nick Lower got the footy. They come out with it now. Daniel Camposano kicking long into the forward line, but it was a wild kick. Well read by Al Huli. And uh, it was uh, Al Huli delivering back to centre wing. All bounces and a chance here now for uh, Aberfeldy again. Blackwell quickly onto the uh, left foot. McLean it was. Sorry, thanks, Benny. Now's the opportunity for them. Centering kick. This is easy. Taking the mark on the chest down there is Nick Catapan. He'll shoot from only about 25 out. Yeah, the first, uh, what have we been going, four and a five minutes. The first five minutes have uh, 
Greenvale have had a few chances to run the ball out of their back 30, but they've uh, not been able to get past the centre line, and when they did, it's been uh, counteracted by Abbas with ease. Nick Catapan now coming in to give the Gorillas a 10-goal lead. Straighter through with the centre it goes. OK, we've got uh, Kev Murphy down there. How yes, do you, Kev? On, on the outer side of the ground, uh, Daryl, and... Uh, there certainly is a stronger win now in this third quarter, blowing down to the uh, city end, but it's all been Aberfeldy uh, in this third quarter, and uh, Greenvale just haven't been able to take advantage of that uh, breeze. And I'll tell you what, the sting's certainly out of the game here at ground level at the moment. Thanks, Kev, and uh, apologies if some of you have lost uh, transmission there for a while. We did experience some technical difficulties, but we're back live from Windy Hill and Aberfeldy doing it beautifully on the last Saturday of the year. Awkward bounce there, allows the Aberfeldy defence in. Hand, hand pass came sideways to Oswald. They're away again. Yeah, out to that outer side, but they made a contest of it. Oh, but good, brilliant work. A hand pass gets them moving, and they're going to run the ball through centre wing, using hand passing uh, to advantage. And now the kick goes in towards half forward. Mark taken there. Is that Oswald? No. That was a, couldn't have been. It must have uh, been Lynch. And now the ball into the forward line. They're just doing it as they like. Zach Hislop with the footy on his chest. Uh, look, here's the challenge. 17 on 18 now. So Greenvale have lost their plus one. Abbas have got a plus one, but just simply because they've got six defenders. And uh, as soon as the ball gets in, if you don't hit a target now, you're in all sorts of trouble because you're just outnumbered. And Abbas are going to get it back really quickly, as they did there, between the arcs. So Zach Hislop, he's already kicked one goal for the Abbas. It's been a 41-year premiership drought. They're looking good to break that today. Hislop, taking plenty of time, concentrating. Puts it on its way. That's straight through the middle. I think they can uh, start to uh, start to open the champagne, Danny. <laughs> I reckon it'll be party time down on the bench. Look, uh, I think if you're 60, what are they, 68 points up, uh, what have we got, five, six, seven minutes into the third quarter of a grand final, there may be a bit of time to actually sit back and enjoy yourself here. Um, seven minutes in, but uh, 68 points. Yeah, it, uh, I've never been in this situation, so I'm not quite sure. <laughs> The experience they're having, but I think it'll be a nice one. I didn't think your coaches were ever happy, no matter how far in front. You're right. <laughs> so Aberfeldy again to go forward. Paddock kicks the ball in towards half foot. We got contests on there. Little hand pass that came out. Chance for Jacob Hislop. Hands it over the top. Angus Graham goes bang and puts another one on the scoreboard. They can do no wrong. I think you're right, Craig. I think it is party time. Oh, look, Greenvale are at walking pace now. They've lost any any energy they had, I think, has been squeezed out of them with the player being sent off. What's that? Three unanswered goals for the quarter. And it's it, it, this has the potential to turn real ugly here. Greenvale need to dig in, just fight and scrap for six or seven minutes here, try and stop the scoreboard moving at all, just to in, ensure they can save some face. Yeah, only eight minutes gone of the third quarter. 74 points to march and as uh, Angus Graham again get the, got the tap out, it could have been a free kick. It is going uh, Sado, Sado's way. So got to be patient. Now. Got to be patient here. Right in towards centre half forward. Good strong mark. No play on around the body. Who was that? That was uh, Nainer, I think. Yeah, screwed Nainer. it back. Snuck it through for a point. One umpire had paid a mark, another umpire had yeah. called uh, play yes. on, so it became quite confusing. Uh, Josh Toy to do the kicking in here for Aberfeldy, shading his eyes against the sun. Beautiful day here at Windy Hill, not so much for Greenvale supporters at the moment. Aberfeldy doing a job on them. Wayne Paddock, last line of defence, just chip sideways. They can't Back be winding the... the game down from here, can they? Back over the toy. <laughs> they keep kicking goals like this, we might have to get Kev to sing a song. Up they go, and there's a nice mark in the centre of the ground. So they bring the ball out towards the uh, wing position. Easy as you like at the present time. Hand pass from Rush. Gave it across to Lance Oswald. He lines up, kicks high to the square. Up they go. No <laughs> mark taken there. Balls to the boundary line. Geez, that was an aggressive spoil by Campanzano there. Yeah, it nearly clicked in his head, and it was going to be uh, another one off the ground if he had it. Potentially. 
Uh, Abbas here are very energetic. I mean, they're rolling a, a high number of rotations. They're getting players off for 30 seconds, 60 second, 90 second breaks. Greenvale look flat. Forward line here for Aberfeldy. Flicked out. Couldn't get it away, though. Another pack forms. These rotations, do the players like that? Um, look, it's, it's changed a little bit to what it used to be. I think from my viewpoint, rotations now are about speed of rotation. It's about having a quick 30, 60 second, 90 second break and getting back on the ground. Players don't like sitting on the bench for three, four, five, six, seven minutes. That's where they get a bit uh, angsty. <laughs> so Chris Farciani with the ball, last line of defence for Greenvale. The kicking's been good today. So's Patak, he's been fantastic. Gave it over to Lynch, spears it in towards the forward line. Hand pass came over now to the dangerous McNamara. He's wrapped up in a tackle by Brewer. That's a great tackle. Wins the free kick, good work by him. So now it's going to be uh, Stephen Brewer. Come kick. towards the centre wing position, looking for Zumbo. He's out the back of the pack, able to grab hold of the footy, looks up the ground, delivers it to half forward. They've let it out in front. Oh, lucks a fortune. It's bounced over the top. Ben Clifton oh. gives it across to Nader, who oh. runs straight into trouble, drops the footy. I'm not sure why Clifton did not want to kick that ball, though. Then he had Hill slid forward. He yeah. had to put it to advantage to Hill. That's all he had to do. So, again, Greenvale finding a way to mess up a forward move. Look at the runners. There's three players forward of the footy. All on their own for Abbas. Lynch picks out Patak. Working beautifully, the Abbas. In they go to McLean. He's been good. He's off. On the right foot, across the face, looking for Big Graham. Lopes after it. Trapped it. Oh, moving like a rover. Chips it sideways. On his left foot, if you don't mind. Uh, Anybody else, that ball stuff. would have bounced over his hand. You know, he's got such a long reach, and he was able to keep the ball in play, and look at what it's set up. He's been amazing today. He's done everything. He's, uh, he's now rucking and just standing in the forward line. And they're forcing DeLuca to just stay with him. So we've got no height between the arcs in terms of the defend at the moment, Greenbar. Zach Hislock, he's already kicked two. One of the best on the ground for mine. Comes in. Just gets to where the ball is. Puts the ball on its way. He's delivered that one beautifully. Split the middle. Another goal on the board there, 17th. Well, it's a training run now for Aberfeldy. As that sign showed on the scoreboard, they're on fire. We're heading to 100-point uh, margin territory here. Um, and Greenvale, they've only had two inside 50 entries and haven't looked like it with either. They're, they're in a real world of hurt at the moment, and they've got to fight this game out, or this could be record margin stuff. Big fellas in the middle again. Greenvale, they're playing for some pride now. Brewer, little kick. Umpire letting it go to hand pass. Came out on that occasion from Gazzo. Chancy now for Sardo. Can't do anything with it. Just working it forward, but again, the Aberfeldy defence. Standing firm. They'll come away through Oswald. Has time for a bounce. Yes, and now the long kick to that half forward line. And out comes Parthenopoulos. Takes the mark. Carboni. Oh, sorry, it wasn't. It was Carboni. Victor Carboni. So he's uh, got the footy, and now directs the footy into the pocket. They're jostling for position, but up in front, Matthew Smith. It's the first time Smith's been out of impact as a third man in down there for uh, the entire game. I'll bar the first four or five minutes, I should say. He kicks across the uh, face of goal, and they've got some uh, space here. Oh. James Rowan, he let it go over the head and uh, he went across the boundary line. Just Tearing about the their out. day. Be tearing your hair out as coach, wouldn't you, Craig? Yeah, look, uh, execution there, their skill execution. Under pressure today, uh, hasn't stood up. Ball thrown in. Front of the Reynolds stand here at Windy Hill. I think DeLuca got his hand to the footy, but again, it's the uh, medium sized players like Mark Lynch for Aberfeldy take the ball away, and it's touched, rush through for a point. But they're peppering the goals at the moment, the Adders. This time, Stephen Brewer to bring the ball back. Kicks it to himself, so he gets the extra 15 metres. Then kicks towards DeLuca, puts his hands in the air. Didn't mark it because Jack McNamara was on him. It got across in the end to Spinella. They keep the footy in. 
Ball bounces unkindly. Bonello's there, though, and picks it up. Kicks towards half forward. This is a good move. Chance now for Matthew Smith. Lines up the goals. Goes bang. That's their goal of the day today. Uh, transfer a play, one end to the other. Came out this side, brought over Feldy out, brought the ball back in through the middle. And good overlap run from behind with Smith, finishing with a goal. Good goal. Uh, hasn't been many of them, but, uh, you know, let's let's see if they can't put back-to-back goals on the scoreboard now. They haven't been able to do it all day. Well, they're a proud club, Greenvale, and they've won many premierships, and it must be sad for their supporters to see them so far down. Yeah, look, I said earlier, James Rowan's playing in his ninth grand final today. I mean, Greenvale have been in grand finals a lot of times, and uh, they are a proud club, and they're a, they're a good club. Shot of Shannon Grant just back there. Um, back to the whiteboard. Does he hold any hope for them? Tell you what, it's a long way to come back from here. 111 to 37, as you can see. Run up in the middle again. Trying to come away with it there was Shinners. Yeah, a couple of quick goals might give them some hope, but uh, they're few and far between. There's the kick marked here by James Rowan. Gets on with it straight away. Yeah, a little kick towards Nader. He's got to go hard at the footy, he did. But uh, they were just as well up to it. On that occasion, Nick Catapan. So now they uh, get tripped. That was Catapan. Hands the ball across. Back it goes to Kubo. Gets it across further. And Lance Oswald lines up and goes bang. Took the uh, target. The big fella. It's two to one, though. And a good mark taken by Matthew Smith. Coming into it a bit now, Matthew Smith. Yeah, he's had a good three or four minutes. Across it goes to Nick Merrick. He's able to recover. Into the centre they They're go. Away here. They've got numbers. Can they make this pay now? Stephen Brewer with it. He's a good kick at the footy. Roosts it long. Right down into Hill territory. Over his head. Free kick to Hill. He's won the free kick. So Tom Hill with the chance to kick, I think, the first un- two unanswered goals for uh, Greenvale for the day. First back-to-back for the day. And look, it, it, here's a challenge for the players on the ground now. If they can kick this, you know, it's two in a row. If they can kick another two or three for the quarter... Three quarter time, you know, if there's, they might be seven, eight goals down, but you know what? You're seven or eight goals down, and things go your way, and you get a little luck, you're a chance to get back in the game rather than being 10 or 12 down this game over. What can Tom Hill do? He's kicked one. Skips in. Oh, he's missed to the left. Costly again, as, I, as we spoke about earlier, taking your chances, and they just haven't been able to do it today, is another good example. Now it'll be Toy to bring the ball back into play here for Aberfeldy. Quite sure which way he wanted to kick the footy. <laughs> so he's asked to play on in the end. Got it into the pocket. I think he's ran over the line. I think the umpire's going to call the ball back. I think you're right. He wasn't quite sure where he wanted. The umpire called him to play on and then he had nowhere to go. Up it goes. Into the goal square here. They'll rush it through for another behind. Sometimes players forget, you know, an umpire calls play on, they still forget to hit the ball in their boot because they've still got to hit the ball in their boot before they leave the square. And that was a good case, a good, good example of it. See if he can do better this time, Josh Toy. I'm sure he will. And all, still not sure which way he's going to go. All first half kick ins went long. And that went long as well outside and that outer side. Over near the bowling club there. And it'll be thrown in. A lot of the sting going out of the game now. Been playing 18 and a half minutes in this third quarter, but Aberfeldy. Burns must be back on the ground. They've got four on the bench here, and Burns isn't here, so the time must have lapsed. They must be back to, to 18 on the ground. Well, at least they've got even manpower. But they really need to pull a rabbit out of the hat here to make a game of this. Because it's a bit of a procession at the moment. Aberfeldy's way. Oh, beautifully done by Blackwell. Won the footy and handed it off to Lynch. Booted long in towards half forward. Over and out. Another throw in. Class act today, Aberfeldy. If you have to bring your A-grade game, they've done it. Absolutely. They have. So the ball to be brought back into play here. Nice tall throw in. Goes to the front of the pack. A lot of players around the football. The wrestle's on for the ball. The umpire says, give it to me. Basically, the umpires have been in control, but it probably hasn't been that tough for them because of the way that Aberfeldy have been playing. Well, it's one of those situations where you haven't noticed the umpires and uh, always think that's a good thing. Again, Aberfeldy. That Lynch again. 
screws it across. Oh, good grab down there. Strong mark to Keppard. Hard to get around when he's got the ball in sight, Craig. Uh, absolutely. Look, uh, the, the, the tall forwards for Aberfeldy have been really dangerous. I know they're smaller mediums hit the scoreboard, but Kefford's been able to take, you know, high ball marks. Uh, Graham has been able to take high ball marks. That's been a real difference. Rabbits have been able to just sort of spin and kick it in. Greenvale had to be a little bit more precise because they haven't been able to take marks overhead. The ball's also had some depth when it comes in. Kefford now puts the ball on its way. Another one. That's their 18th goal of the day. OK, we go down to Kev Murphy. Yeah, thanks, Daryl. I just thought I'd come down and oh. show you here. The um, ice cream van's really going off, but I've been disciplined. I haven't had one yet. Um, but after the game, I'll get stuck right into it. Uh, great scenes down here. The kids love it. It's back to you, fellas. <laughs> you idiot. I, I told you party time had started. <laughs> Another, yet again, though, Aberfeldy's been able to stop Greenvale getting back-to-back -back goals. Um, so the margin's back to 13. Didn't buy one for us, I know. No, no, he doesn't share hours. around, does he? Ball back in the centre, 117 plays, 39 as you can see there. It's all Aberfeldy's way. Adam Marrick trying to make something happen. Gets the ball out of the middle, puts it right up deep for the Jets. They all pile in. Another ball up. 21 minutes gone of this third quarter. If uh, Greenvale were going to get back into the game, it had to be this quarter. They haven't. A quick kick by Ben Clifton. We'll see it out of bounds and on the full. Well, Aberfeldy just enjoying the moment. And I'll tell you what, you can't begrudge them. 41 years. The old VFL, it's at the uh, state school end, Dags. Yes. That's right. Good long kick. As they work their way forward again, the Abbas. And the open space is there. Oh, strength. Good piece of work. That was a great clash. Kubilo and uh, Brewer, both strong. Brewer went to ground when I thought he had the ball. He was away, and Kubilo was brought back into the game and still couldn't break his tackle. Well played. Back that comes into uh, the uh, boundary-throwing contest. Taking it out of the ruck was Trent Shinner's. Got his foot to the footy. But it's in the bowling it, green. But put it in the bowling green. Jack High, I reckon. Yeah. It'll take a while for this to come back. Unless there's a few back. blokes watching I'm the game from in there because they don't want to pay. I hope it hasn't got three holes in it. When the it emergency umpire is bringing a ball out now. Here she comes. Oh, no, it's back over the fence. Kitty threw it back. Thanks, <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> that would have been terrible that it had landed on the, their balls. <laughs> Jesse Laurie with the footy. Centre wing out of sight of the ground. Goes in short. Is he marking the end there to Jack McNamara? Goalless so far today. Well, up the ground at the moment. Oh, Have a look at that for a kick. Right up into the teeth of goal. They set themselves. Good, strong mark by the big fella, Fabian DeLuca. Fed it off straight away. Ends up over here with Nick Lower. Still in the very last line of defence. Comes back to lower in the end. Through traffic. Little chip over. Well picks out Adam Marrick. He uh, wasn't quite sure where to go. And then finds Rowan Nainer on that centre wing position. He's off and running. Delivers it. But oh, too high. That time for Matthew Smith. And so therefore the pressure's off again to Luke Blackwell. Looks up the ground and delivers long. That's what they do each time. Put a lot of pressure on Greenvale. Their defence is holding up on this occasion. Matt Smith hurt himself. He's still down in the middle of the ground from that bump he got. I think he might have hurt a knee. Nainer Nain goes wide and finds Brewer. Brewer now. He's had a bit of it today. Tips it over to Lower. Nick Lower heads over to the grandstand wing. This will have to be pinpoint perfect, wasn't. Punched away from Benello. Goes in and gets it again. Shrugs the tackle. Good work by him. Over the head nearly of uh, Rowan Nainer. Had to shield his eyes against the sun. Came back over to Lower. Vision was good. Saw it to that outer side. So now it's Brewer. Delivering the uh, ball long, but it didn't hit the target. Fascioni's over oh, there. He can't keep it in. It just, you know, you get into these situations in games. It bounces right, it bounces left. It just goes over a player's head. Habers will come the other way and it'll just be all nice and clean. And that's kind of what happens when things are going your way. And she comes again. The uh, Ruckman set themselves. Little knock over the top. 
Now they're going to move the ball through Wayne Paddock. His kick goes into the centre of the ground. Oh, great manoeuvring by Toy. He uh, made sure that ball came to the ground. But now the uh, chance again for them through uh, Nick Capitan. Gives it wide. Going to run through the 50-metre arc. Another Aberfeldy goal coming up for sure. Straight through the middle. Off the boot of... Was that Craven? Not sure. Great piece of work. And Aberfeldy go further ahead. Jess Rush. Yeah, they linked it beautifully, didn't they? Yeah, they do. And, and Rush playing on the far wing, you'll see here. He's, uh, he's been able to get involved in a couple of links throughout the afternoon on that side of the ground. That, then he just had time and space to carry the foot. He had two options to use inside 50. Took the space and kicked the goal. Well played. Back in the centre. And, uh, the Ruckman again hard at it with each other. Trent Shinners puts the ball towards half forward, but it's a high kick. Oh, that was a strong mark, a good mark too. Taken there by uh, Luke Davis, a co-captain. Delivers wide to McLean. And again, they just work the ball forward. Just doing as they want, really. Rush fed off the hand pass. They chop it off at centre-half back. Good work on that occasion by Josh Smith. So DeLuca's got to get forward here and be used as an option. He's just sitting back behind there trying to cover um, Graham. He's making it easy for Graham. Another kick long, one against two here. It was uh, perfect, though, in the end. Sardo took it. Gets the hand pass off. Oh, that was a uh, an ambitious cross. Chance here for Nana. Sardo's there again. Just can't get any real system going. And look at that. Straight turnover, straight to the opposition. And the Abbas come away again. Slows things down, says Al Hooley. So he just uh, delivers it to Wayne Paddock. Just made the 15 metres on that occasion. So he just looks around to see where things are. We've played 27 minutes of this quarter. Now he delivers it uh, to the centre wing position. Punch from behind. Went through McLean and got to Josh Smith. He delivers nicely to Marrick. Now, oh, now that's a shocking hand pass, putting his teammate under pressure. He could have gone back. He knows he made the mistake as well. He's trying to be creative. I mean, he's trying to create something and, you know, it didn't come off. Yeah. I guess as you, you said before, complain. when things are going against you, everything goes wrong. Yep. And it's unravelling at the moment for Greenvale. Ryan Allen with the ball. Pops it out in no man's land. The bounce was unkind on that occasion for Aberfeldy. Yeah. Chance here now. Oh, oh high tackle on Lynch. No doubt about that one. <laughs> First his way through as they have a little bit of push and shove. Lynch with a footy centre wing. Shields his eyes from the sun once more. Big bloke coming off for Aberfeldy, limping. So the ball towards Nana, who got up high to actually spoil only. Just couldn't launch himself far enough to get both hands on it. Ryan Allen off. He's, his left knee's heavily bandaged here. I would be surprised if he'd come back on. Yeah, he's obviously carried, he's carrying an injury. I've never seen his left knee strapped. Then it comes. Twin wing and half forward here for Aberfeldy. Kick there for Ralph Phillips up towards the centre half forward position proper. Working it towards the boundary now. Oh, Reem oh, <laughs> has did it beautifully. Burst out of the pack. That's class. Abbas get another one. He uh, burst through traffic there like a turnstile. He walked through, you know, there was no, just no tackle stuck. The arms were just uh, all broken in that tackle and you've got to defend better than that in the grand final. Um, and they just couldn't do it. Great finish by Kyle Remus. Now, this thing about kicking a goal and running off, Craig, tell us about that. They always say, oh, that was going to be a rotation anyway. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, look, what can, teams can have set rotations, which is the longest mid who kicks the longest forward that kicks a goal hasn't been off. After kicking a goal, you come off. OK. Teams can have that. Not our style, Dag. Stay on there <laughs> if you've kicked a goal. You want to kick another. So the ball in the centre. Let's and do what the 19th and 20th man back. <laughs> so again, they go forward. Aberfeldy towards a half forward line. And uh, the ball is kept in there. Blackwell underneath it. Quick with the, uh, to ball it up on that occasion. That gets them moving quickly. So they'll go forward again. Blackwell's kick to the top of the square. Oh. They fly. And no mark there. Got a bit of pace. That was by Mark Lynch. Can he keep it in? He Oswald. does. Oswald. Gets it back to Nick Catapan. Lines it up. Sensational goal, that. 
straight through the centre. 21 goals on the scoreboard. Had a pan's third, and it was a ripper. Yeah, great kick. He's a really good. He's a really uh, deep, a deep kick. He's a real penetrating kick, and he's a. Um, and he hits the scoreboard quite regularly. He's doing it more now than he probably has in years gone by. But he's probably kicked, you know, 25-odd goals, I reckon, for the season. And he's a great finisher. Last year, he uh, burst forward to kick, shoot on goal in the last quarter uh, and hit the bottom of the post. And uh, we were able to defend the last five or six minutes and win. But uh, today, he's finished well. <laughs> so they're away again now, Aberfeldy. Going in hard. Hislop got it. Gave it over towards Toy, who has all the time in the world just to... Poke it over. The paddock as the siren goes for three-quarter time and it's nearly a 100-point ball game. Just so a matter of how far. What they kick for the quarter? Nine? Something like that. Yeah, look, uh, do domino absolute domination. I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, a team that's undefeated at their best in the third quarter in a you know, premiership quarter in a grand final. Um, they're well on top, and now really it's about how much they win by and how much they enjoy it. Well, I'm sure they're going to enjoy it. They've waited 41 years for it, and we'll be back with more uh, after the three-quarter time break for the last quarter of grand final action in 2015. Hi, I'm Phil from the Strathmore Community Branch of Bendio Bank. If you do your banking with us, you can rest assured that the profits we generate will be put back into the local community. We contribute 80% of our profits back into the local community. Thank you. And back here at Windy Hill, players in the huddles for three quarter time. A special comments man today, Craig Clinic, the coach of the Strathmore Football Club. Craig, uh, as a coach of a leading uh, local club, how, how do you view the new uh, system that the AFL Victoria wants to put in place for points? Yeah, look, I think, uh, you know, the initiative of AFL Victoria about evening up um, competitions around Metro Melbourne, particularly uh, particularly Tier 1 Metropolitan and, and country level for that matter, and bring in a point system. Uh, the debate at the moment is whether the points number should be 60 or whether it should be 50 for a starting viewpoint and then sliding back over the next couple of years. But it's going to be supported with a salary cap, which, look, from my viewpoint... Um, as long as it's done in every league, I think it's a good initiative. Um, the points number for the players is the same. You come out of AFL, you're worth six or five points. Um, OK, we might just come back to your thoughts there, Craig, because uh, Kev's down there at ground level. Down to you, Kev. Yes, thanks, boys. I've got uh, Damien Peverell with me at the moment, uh, one of the assistants down here at Aberfeldy. No doubt you guys are pretty happy at three-quarter time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm um, very happy. I suppose the message was just to continue on. Um, finish the game off. Um, also, at the same time being respectful to our opponents who are, who are a great great club, great team but, but yeah, just finish off and, and um, yeah, no let up this quarter hopefully. In situations like this when you've got such a big lead at three quarter time, it really does provide an opportunity for the players to soak in the uh, last quarter and enjoy the moment out there and have a bit of fun, doesn't it? It does, yeah, but at the same time you, you still got to keep the same things you'll be doing, I mean um, you know, the play's really good, so no millionaire stuff. Just, just keep to the basics, keep to the structures. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you can run around for the last 30 minutes knowing the game is, is in the bag and, and enjoy the last 30 minutes. So, um, you know, it's all respect to the guys. They've had a great year and, um, you know, finished off today with, a, with another great game. Yeah, your uh, use up forward has been terrific. You've kicked it long when you've had to, um, when you've had those opportunities, but also, you know, the boys have uh, lifted their eyes and found targets inside 50. You've really used the ball well today. Yeah, we have. Um, I mean, obviously, they, they put a number behind the ball early on, so, so we had to really be smart with the ball. We had to use, use a short hit up or, or go long over the head. And I think on most times... Um, They've, put, they've made the right choice. I mean, a few times we've, we've kicked it straight to Smith, but, but generally we've been really good in, in the decision that we've made. So, um, once again, it's, it's just due to, to the work we've done. I mean, we've, we've sort of trained those hit-ups all year, and, um, you know, it's, it's, today it's coming off. Um, so, yeah, once again, it's, it's down to the guys sort of listening and, um, and being able to, to, to play with the, to the game plan. Well, uh, fantastic effort so far in the first three quarters. Enjoy the last quarter, Damien. We do. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks very much, Kev. Uh, Craig, you were, uh, you were saying about the point system? Yeah, look, I think it's a great initiative. It's going to be across uh, Metro Melbourne and country footy. Um, 
it'll be uh, equal across the leagues in terms of the, the points number. There'll be a salary cap to support the points. Salary cap will be across all uh, leagues, will vary. Um, you know, it's really about, your, I guess, your junior development as a footy club. It's about bringing guys through your clubs under 14, 16s and 18s. Um, I'm not sure how much it, it, it will even clubs up, but I think it will certainly cap how strong clubs can become at the high end. Um, and hopefully it, able, it, it even sides up like the AFL have been able to do and get more sides playing finals over a period of time. Um, that'd be terrific. And uh, I, I think the program is, is a good step forward for Metropolitan Footy. Good stuff. The thoughts there of uh, Craig Clinic. And that will watch that uh, system with interest over the next few years. Well, the crowd just making their way off the ground after the three-quarter time huddle. One quarter of football left in 2015, but there's no doubt about the result now because uh, Aberfeldy are marching to Premiership glory here. And it's the first game, what first grand final for three or four years that's uh, been a blowout. Probably. Yeah, absolutely. They've been close. You know, I think uh, Strathmore's last two, I think they won one by two. I think they lost one by two, and I think they won another one by three. Siren sounds for the last quarter of 2015. 21-9, 135-5, to 9-39. And we'll just see the game towards the uh, final siren of the, of the year. Should be sensational at the end with Aberfeldy getting up. But uh, let's get through this quarter first. And it's going to be Marrick delivering the footy in towards half four there for Greenvale. But Josh Toys there. He's been terrific in defence. Gets it out where Brock McLean steams after the footy. Can't get to it before it goes out of bounds. It'll be thrown in. Gone with six on six both ends. So there's no loose, no plus one for either side. Oh, basic footy now, Craig. Looks like six on six forwards. <laughs> yeah, six on six. So the ball thrown in. Greenvale playing for a bit of pride. Perhaps they'll be aiming at not being beaten by 100 points. Who knows what their target is? But Aberfeldy, relentless. They've been terrific today. They've been terrific all oh. season, in fact. That was great piece of work on that occasion. So they storm forward again. Greenvale defence has been under pressure all day. And the mark taken. They're just trying to uh, make something happen. Comes over towards Sardo. Handles the ball ahead of him. I'll see it towards the line. Over and out for a throw in. I'd like to see him kick that footy. It gets in his hands. I know the guy was closing him down. I'd just like to see him get that ball out of his distance, get it down the ground. Give his next teammate an option to win the next one on one. So it's virtually on centre wing in front of the stand. First time for the day it's been here. Sato with the left boot. Puts it towards half forward. Getting back there's Tom Hill. Can't uh, really get an easy kick because of the pressure. Oh, Aberfeldy, they bump into each other and still come out with the footy. But uh, it's a loose footy now. Now the, the little kick goes towards that uh, wing position. Wayne Patek has hold of it and brings it in. And that man Ooh. just uh, finds the right spot all the time. Zach Islop gets into the right position once more to take a mark. Been very dangerous today. Very dangerous up forward. You'd just about back him to put it in through from here. Well, of course, it uh, was his brother, I think, in the side last year. Uh, yeah, there uh, was sorry, the year before. Two, yeah, two yeah. Hislops last year, and there's yeah. two this year. Uh, yeah. Different two, though, yeah. yeah. Zach Hislop, he's kicked three. Comes in, just inside the 50, decided not to have a shot. Oh. He honours the lead given down here of Kyle Reamers and he'll shoot for goal from about 35 out. Bit of an angle. That is sharing it around. That's uh, the opposition who have uh, almost checked out. You know, there Don't was just no one filling the space and he could leave every, you know, the leading goal, second leading goal kicking a comp, can't have space. So Reamers coming in, has three to date and still only has the three. Puts it across the face. So, uh, we'll kick back in by lower there. What can Greenvale do in this last quarter? No, make a bit of a better performance. There's a long kick in towards half forward. No mark taken on that occasion. And again, Aberfeldy, Catapan, he's been very good, especially in the second half. Gets it out to the centre wing. And they got run here through Lynch. Hands it uh, inboard. They've just got time now to uh, deliver the footy. And they do so, but not a great kick on that occasion. Matthew Smith jumps into the spot and takes the mark, delivers it backward. Could put under pressure. Brock McLean 
tackled, but it got it over the top uh, to Campanzano. Gets it down the ground, mark taken by Bonello. Bonello's kick in towards the centre, picks out Nana. Little pass. Spinella has the opportunity. Oh, fed it over nicely to the hard running Faccioni. He's kicking towards goal. Ugly looking, but it'll do the it's job. It's a belated goal for Greenvale. And the uh, crowd, the crowd weren't big on that, were they? No, they weren't. That grandstand's nearly empty out there. Look, that was full before. Yep. That grandstand and that. Uh, look again, that bit of play off Greenvale. You know, they've gone from coast to coast. They've maintained possession. They changed angles. They brought it through the middle. Came outside. Got back in through the middle. Result is a goal. Abbas didn't touch the ball in to win. Better skill executions, giving him a shot on goal. Almost five minutes gone, the final quarter. Hand pass, it's like pinball machine in there. Comes out with Marek, who's uh, had a fair bit of the footy. Puts it uh, into the forward line. Uh, they're uh, backing their judgment back there. Been good just, today, Laurie. Yeah, just Laurie. Been very good across puts, half back. Puts it across to Mark Lynch. His left foot kick down the line. Oh, oh. Paddock was uh, going to get clobbered then. Did so now the uh, ball's there in the uh, <laughs> forward line. Gareth Phillips. How did he get away with that? He did. Gets the ball into the forward line and nice mark taken by Alison Kefford. He wanted to move it quick. So. Keppard now, long kick, right up into the teeth of goal. They set themselves, ball falls to the base of the pack. Quick hands over towards Carboni. Strolls in. More icing on the cake for Aberfeldy. Yes, thanks, boys. And I'm down here uh, with the production crew from C31 Sport. We've really enjoyed, obviously, doing the grand funnels last week and this week, and it's taken a big team to get uh, this broadcast to where well done to all our camera operators, all our assistants, all our production and technical crew. Uh, it's been a fantastic effort to get the SM District Footy League Grand Finals to air. They've done a great job. And hopefully we can do it again next year. Back to you, boys. Thanks, Kev. Ball back in the centre here as Aberfeldy march on their winning way. But uh, the ball's still in the centre of the ground. Oswald's back there. Hand pass came out. They release it. Now they'll go forward. Long kick towards half forward to nobody in particular, but they have the ball going in front of them again. It's Kefford who uh, kicks the ball high, wide, not so handsome, and it's out of bounds on the full. Yes, you're right, Craig. The crowd's starting to thin here now. Yeah, I think. Noticeably. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess you know, not with the margin opening up, if probably the non uh, non barracking uh, supporters have decided enough's enough. But I think most Greenville people and certainly all Abbas people would still be. Here. So Adam Marek now has a nonchalant bounce, then has the ball knocked out of his hands, has to hurry his kick then. Nana came across and took the mark. He's tried hard. Into the centre wing. Taken here by uh, Parthenopoulos. Gave it over here to the running Zumbo. Zumbo went towards centre half, or they could have rappled it. Two of them and taking the mark down there it was Joe Gazzo. About 40 metres out from goal. Greenvale have six goals on the scoreboard. So Gazzo. She's gone a long way back for this kick. Like her old bowling run up, Benny. Yeah. I mean lawn bowls. Traverses the 50 metre arc, puts the ball on its way right into the teeth. The goal's going to swing back. Great goal, that. That's their seventh. Proud sponsors of the 2015 EDFL Final Series, Pre-Pack Cartons supply the printing industry with the right cartons at the right price. Custom sizes for custom carton needs. Call Pre-Pack Cartons on 9350 4700. Well, few and far between today. Goals for Greenvale. And that was Joe Gazzo's second, the only multiple goal scorer for the Jets. And again, Aberfeldy out of the middle through the agency, this time of Cabillo. Off hands it goes. Blackwell strolls in towards. Oh! oh! Colliding with a post down there with Camposano and it's through for a goal. Well, what a stumble that was. He stumbled and uh, nearly got shirt fronted by that goal post. Lucky he was. Padding on the post there, otherwise he would have been out cold. Nothing going their way at all. 
I think Blackwell spun out of the pack, and I think the ball must have slipped, and he just got the, his toe on it, and it went sort of rolling end on end on end on end on end. And Campesano was going to get it, but it got away from him. And then he's absolutely driven his hip through that uh, through that goalpost, and I reckon he'll be a sore boy. Trying to do a Lee Matthews. Up they go once more, and Cubello's quick kick sees it to half forward. Push and shove. It was, uh, the ball comes out, and it's going to be Greenvale that will through Marrick. He takes the uh, first option, hands it over the top, running through Zdem Mefeski in towards half forward. The lead was on, the kick was good, the mark's taken. Joe Gazzo again with the footy. Kick two goals so far, Joe Gazzo. It's about as far out as he was last time. So what can he do with this? Gazzo. Looking for his third. Taking plenty of time. Puts it on its way. It's going to come oh. back. Swung away to the right. Point only. Don't know how you can make the ball come right there. No. Uh, although the trees have died down a little bit, you'll notice, uh, to what they were earlier. But, geez, it's tough to miss right on this side of the ground. I wonder what his golf shot's like. Uh, yeah. So it'll be toy to bring the ball back into play. Delivers it, but it's cut off on this occasion by McGeskey. He's just outside the 50 metre arc. They haven't called him often today. Delivers in towards the forward line. Good mark. And Tommy Hill comes out and takes the mark on his chest. Did it pretty easily. Again, a difficult pocket to score from, though. So Tom Hill comes in, steers it through. It snuck around, I think. It is, that's a goal. As we search, search once, a, once again for Kev Murphy. Where is he now? Oh, yeah, boys. Well, that ice cream I had didn't really agree with me, so the St John's crew, they do a great job. They're looking after me down here. How's my heart rate, girls? <laughs> you haven't got a heart. You're in trouble. Yeah. Oh, well, let's see how I go. Hopefully I can uh, stick it out to the end of the game, boys. i tell you what, what do you know about rectal thermometers? Back to you, boys. <laughs> That's the first back-to-back -back goal today, I reckon, for uh, Greenvale. <laughs> Kev might get a bit of back-to-back in as well. <laughs> the ball's marked uh, there. That's Jesse Rush. And uh, plays on, gets around his opponent. Gee, good contributor today. A long kick into the forward line. They get back on the footy. Bounces free, kick off the ground. It wasn't the desired effect there. The ball is locked up. It comes free, though. And uh, another little kick off the ground. Toe poke. And another one through. Soccer goal that time. 24th on the scoreboard. That's come off Graham's boot again, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, well, I, think, I think they'd give it to him. I think he, he just toe-poked it through from about an inch out. That'd make it five for the big fella, Angus Graham. He's got a big smile on his face and no wonder. Great game from him. Must be fantastic for blokes that have played league footy to come back to local footy and win a premiership. Yeah, look, I mean, Angus Graham's probably only been at Abbas for... Eight games, I reckon, because he came mid-season. Um, been playing at Albury, come down here, and he finds himself in the grand final. Uh, that'll be a great feeling. And he's uh, out there doing the ruck work again. They surge forward. Not uh, taking their foot off the brake, off the uh, accelerator at all, the Yappers, and that's a great tackle made there by Wayne Patak. He's been terrific today. Real engine room man, isn't he? He's Machewski then. And Patak, he was... Uh, been good all day, actually. Kick over from Jesse Laurie. He's also been prominent. Cabillo in short. And it's a bit of a procession here. Aberfeldy turning it on. Carboni with the footy. Carboni kicking right on the 50-metre line. Puts it on its way. Teeth a goal. Great a good mark in defence there by Matthew Smith. So uh, what will they do here? Go to the outer side? You would think so. No, in the end, down to the stand side. High Flyers wanted and uh, getting up uh, in front was Rush. Couldn't take the mark all the same. Trying to spin out was Ben Clifton. A nice little smother on that occasion. 
hand it back and they're going, they're going to go through through Adam Al Hooley right across the face of goal and the big man Angus Graham takes another mark well he's just been sensational for them today yeah he's uh, knocking on the door of the middle I think um, you know there's been some midfielders you could rattle off uh, but Halfback flankers, but gee whiz, this guy to me has been the most uh, influential on the ground. Craig Clinic said that earlier. This fellow would be a key to the game. He's lining up for his sixth goal. Taking his time. Puts it on its way. Goal umpire looks fairly satisfied. Another goal to Angus Graham, another goal to the Evers. And the difference just is, you know, I mean, you don't see Ruckman kick six goals. No. I mean, he's a guy that's playing in a ruck that's pushed forward. It's exactly what he does. It's his strength, as I, as I called out pre-game. And they had to stop him doing that today. And he's done it at will. And he's beaten DeLuca and beaten him handsomely. Uh, and he's beaten anyone that's been thrown up against him. Nearly 15 minutes gone, final quarter. Painful for Greenvale, but the Aberfeldy supporters lapping it up. After all, they've waited 41 years for this. Bit of by play in the stands as the ball's thrown into the air once more. So Merrick hands the uh, ball across to Jared Bonello. Looks up the ground and uh, wobbles it into half forward. What a pass. And, yeah, in the end, Chris Bonello is able to spin around, kick long into the goal square. Good defensive work that time by Toy. Sees the boy, ball across the line for behind only. Misley, even into the last quarter with a great lead like this. Well, doing what, still doing what they have to do. Look at that magnificent kick out again. The kicking's been superb today. Wheeling out of the pack there on that occasion was McNamara. He sits it up very high. Bounces between two Greenvale defenders. Smith tried to burst his way through. Lost possession. Spills over and out. And is this about how far Aberfeld is ahead of the rest of the competition this year, Craig? Gee whiz, it may be the competition, but I wouldn't have thought the team second on the ladder. Um, you know, probably sides out of the out of the four, yeah, but the, no, no, I don't think they're 100 points ahead of the second team in the comp, no. I think they've played today like they are the absolute best team in the comp, and Greenvale have been well off where they needed to be to give us a contest. And that week's rest make, makes a difference? Absolutely. They're fresh. They're, uh, they're flying, over Yeah, they're fresh and flying into the forward line again. Smith. Fed off the hand pass. He's been busy today, Sardo. He got it off again. They work it in towards the middle. Quick hands over here towards Spinella. Got the footy ahead of him. Oh, Handball's backwards. I don't know whether that was uh, expected. Bonello in trouble now. He's tackled. They go in to try to fix up that mistake. They've got the numbers. Came over to Nana. Nana screws it back front and centre. Whistle on play, and it's going to be a... Free kick going over Feldy's way. Yeah, against Tommy Hill yep. for uh, pushing out. Al Hooley with the footy. Gee, they've been consistent in that back line today. There is uh, just a big flat over the game at the moment. We've got players walking. We've got minimal movement. Um, McLean presents and gets hit up, but it's uh, a bit flat out there now. So he delivers back in towards the uh, centre of the ground. And pass came over here to Phillips. Good mark again, though. Danny Burns. So the ball uh, kicked by Catapan back towards the centre of the ground where uh, it was uh, marked then by Josh Schmidt. They go forward again. One way or the other, a little one across. Goes towards Hill. Can't take the mark, has to recover, does. Has to get a hasty hand pass out. And it's uh, locked up. What's going on here? They all just, uh, you're right, they just um, stopped Stop. doing nothing. Yes. Watching, they're all spectating. Yeah. Order of the day today has been fumbles, I can tell you, from, uh, from Greenvale. Yes, they uh, haven't played with confidence at all. Chris Farciani wipes after the footy. Can't stop it from going out. So just going through the motions in this last quarter here at the moment, you can see the score, a 101-point blowout here in the UDFL Grand Final. It's been all Aberfeldy. 
Premiers and Champions they'll be. Undefeated for the season. Great effort by them. Greenvale though. Still coming forward. Bounces ahead of Hill. He gathers. Shrugs the tackler. Round on the right foot. High kick in towards the teeth of goal. Could nearly be a free kick. Uh, they rush it through from behind. Absolutely a free kick. Yeah, no doubt about it. No Just took him out of the contest. Out of the play, yep. So, uh, McLean, one way or the other, has time. Now we get tackled. Got a quick kick. It's going to go to the boundary line. Is that deliberate? <laughs> no, says the umpire. He got away with blue murder there, I reckon. Brock McLean. I reckon it might have been who had the ball rather than what happened. <laughs> yeah, so the ball uh, comes back into play and again out of bounds. The celebrations will be long and hard tonight at Everfelder, you would think. Yes, they'll celebrate long, they'll celebrate hard. 41 years the drought for premierships between premierships for Aberfeldy. They've rectified that today oh, in style. Vision. Beautiful vision. Ends up now with the running Phillips. In towards the middle he goes. Aberfeldy could be excused for taking the foot off the pedal. But they're not going to. Over towards the outer wing it goes. Lance Oswald. Plenty of time in the world to take the bounce of the footy. Screw it back inboard. Oh, Nain is there. Couldn't take the ball. Beautifully done by Hislop. Gave it over towards Carboni. Carboni again. And Carboni into another goal. Just goes... Down to Kev. Yeah, boys, uh, I'm down here standing. You can see the crowd. We're going nuts here. The Everfeldy crowd, they're up and about. It's going to be a massive win to the Abbas. And come on, crowd, get excited about the Everfeldy. Come on, get up there. Oh, Everfeldy, we're excited down here, boys. It's back to you. <laughs> Look at him amongst the crowd. He's found some friends. <laughs> Fair feathered ones. Renter friends. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, ball thrown up in the centre once more. Brewer gets it across to Nana. Hands it off, and it'll be Ben Clifton to deliver the ball towards the centre of the ground. <laughs> Hit on the back of the head was Josh Smith on that occasion with the footy. High tackle paid. It's going Aberfeldy's way. Jack McNamara. It's a great name, I reckon. Great Australian name. Hasn't had a huge influence on the game, Craig? But nah, uh, look, he's been strong. He's been he's competitive. Been he's brought it to ground. He's relieved McNamara. He's relieved, sorry, um... Uh, L -L 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 Graham in the ruck at times allowed Gray to slide forward. So he's been, you know, last time he won a premiership was from Aberdon Park in uh, 2010. Well, they're loving it down there. The Aberfeldy supporters. Despite a visit from Kev. <laughs> then it comes. Half forward here. For the Abbas. Kick out of defence finds its way to the centre wing. Chance there for... Uh, McNamara, the man we were just talking about. Hand pass came over here to Toy. Toy now, undergrounder. Oh, gee. Jacob Hislop copped a uh, good one on his way through. Ball at centre, half forward now. Spinella wheels around onto the left foot. He's got Gaza free. Right. Takes the mark. Inside the 50. Let's fly. Bounces. <sighs> through for a goal. Hill made sure it was through. So three goals to Joe Gazzo if that one doesn't get attributed to Hill. He got his foot to it right at the end. Ninth goal on the board to uh, Greenvale. So it's Aberfeldy's day. So the ball kicked by Brewer in towards a half forward again for Greenvale. At least they're playing footy. It could have got ugly. Joe Gazzo will take will not take the free kick. He jumped on top of the foot and took the legs of his opponent out. Not sure about that that uh, style of free kick. It's in now. But uh, Lance Oswald taking them on, running them down hard. And quick hand pass goes over the top. Nick Catapan sends it towards the half forward line, but it's a bit wide for his teammates. It's out of bounds for a throw in. Angus Graham still lurking down there. He's still hungry. <laughs> Forward pocket here for Aberfeldy. 100 points the margin. High kick. 
Won't bring rain. There's too much sunshine around. Knocked away on that occasion from Sardo. And again, Aberfeldy with the numbers. Just looks too easy at times. Yeah. They set it up. Over here towards the centre wing. Marked on the chest by Jack McNamara. Really uh, racking up the possessions in this last turn. Picks out Al Hurley. Delivers it across the ground, but it's cut off there. And the uh, ball will go into the centre of the ground. Merrick will have to get his kick quickly. He does. Picks out uh, Matthew Smith. Quick to get the ball up forward. And Good. the mark taken, Tommy Hill. Good Just fast ball him. movement. Yeah, good movement, and uh, Hill running to the right position for him. Made it easy. They haven't made many mistakes today, Abbas, but that was a big one, Al Hooley, trying to square the ball up through the corridor, trying to kick the ball around his shoulder, which was uh, turned the footy over. The direct results are shot on goal for Greenbar. Hill has only two goals on the scoreboard today, but he comes in, rectifies that. That's his third, and Greenvale's tenth. Brings the margin back to 100. Can they get it under it? I guess is their challenge now. You know, you'd like to think they can uh, bridge that uh, three, three-digit milestone to uh, bring it under that margin. If it was a home and away, you'd be saying go for the percentage. Uh, percentage booster. <laughs> Just a sensational day for local footy grand final, isn't it? I think the grand scoreboard's actually behind our scoreboard. They've brought it up to date now. So uh, the margin back to 94 points now. A little kick out of the middle there in Greenvale. Getting some late action here, but the umpire's going to call the ball right back. Been playing over 25 minutes, 25 and a half minutes in this final quarter. Party time for Aberfeldy. Marked on the chest here by Machewski. Machewski will shoot from inside the 50 for the Jets. Here's a thought. Uh, Strathmore won last year's grand final. I, I, I reckon kicking 72 or 74 points. Greenvale have kicked 72 points today. We've been uh, quite critical of how well they haven't played. Mm. And Abbas have kicked 166. Let's just puts the difference in comparison. Great effort by Aberfeldy. Daniel Machewski unleashes. It floats away to the left. Could be a mark down there to Hill, is it? Yeah. Got a beauty. Runs around. Snaps it back. Makes work for the goal umpire. Is he going to reward him with a goal? He will. So two late goals to Tom Hill. You were saying about Tom Hill, you know, how tall he is and how well he marks. But he's also quick across the ground yes. too, isn't he? Uh, he's got good ground coverage. He's... Uh... Now, there's a camera that down now on the Aberfeldy bench. They're really enjoying themselves uh, and deserve it. Uh, good on them. Full credit to uh, you know Adam Potter, first year coach in the league, to take the team uh, to the to the uh, the big the big dance and be able to get the job done. Well done. He's done it superbly. Uh, Mel Michael just nutted in recent years. As Greenvale surge forward again, Nick Marrick. Oh, oh a ripper! Beautiful mark, taken by Joe Gazzo, only metres out. Some of what we would have loved to have seen earlier. Where's this been? <laughs> so Gazzo Three shoots. in a row. Ball. He kicks his fourth. Joe Gazzo's taken a few nice marks throughout the day. He's, a t he's tough at the footy, and uh, for a smaller guy, it takes a high mark. He's a uh, very dangerous player, Joe. I mean, he, he only needs five or six kicks a game, and he'll hit the scoreboard four or five times. Uh, he's strong, he's reasonably quick, he's a good mark, he's a good kick, so um, he uh, he goes about it right. Oh, there's the bench again, as you can see. Look at the guys. Uh, Ryan Allison hasn't been back on the ground since he came off with that sore knee, um, but uh, they're absolutely in celebration mode now. And so they should be. You can't be any more dominant in a season or a game than the Gorillas have been today. Absolutely sensational. Big thump away. Chance here for Greenvale to add another late goal. In towards the pocket it comes. And they're just, uh, well, making goals look easy now. Tom Hill's got it again. He's kicked two goals in the last quarter. This for goal number five. 20, mate, 28 and a half minutes has gone in this final term. In comes Hill. Puts it on its way, read that one beautifully and straight through the centre. Yeah, 
Yes, as you asked, Craig, where's it been? They've uh, they've, they've kicked, uh, you know, I reckon four goals uh, with uh, with centre clearance. Uh, you know, Ab has not touched the footy, used the ball well, executed well, marked and kicked goals. That's uh, oh, the best. The big difference in over the three quarters and now is they've been able to get some centre clearances. In, in, in summary, they couldn't get them in the first three quarters. In an age where we often see eight or ten goals winning a game of footy with. Uh, defensive structures so strong these days. We've seen 39 goals kicked today. Amazing. So the ball goes into Eberfeldy's forward line again. There's the siren for the final of the EDFL Premier Grand Final. Eberfeldy running out winners. 26-10, 166 to Greenvale. 13-12-90. They deserve their win gone through the season undefeated fantastic effort to them yes as I say 41 years since their last premiership Aberfeldy they've had some near misses it's been a long drought for them they made up for it today in sensational style and uh, worthy winners just uh, a class act today Craig oh look I couldn't tell you the last time this term was used but they're premiers and champions uh, for season 2015 undefeated you know 20 games of footy, and they've won the big dance by 76 points. Uh, it's a quality team. It's well coached. It's a very, very deep list. A lot of skill, a lot of strength. Uh, look, congratulations, Aberfeldy. You deserve it. Um, their third attempt in a row to win it. Their third attempt in the grand final. They were convincing today, and, uh, you know, they deserve the spoils of premiers. And I'm sure that the uh, champagne and the beer is going to flow down at uh, Aberfeldy for the next couple of days anyway. So... Uh, they deserve it. Well done. And it'll taste pretty good, I reckon. Uh, winning a grand final tastes good. Winning one by, what, not by 70-odd points. I reckon they might have been sneaking a couple in on the uh, boundary line after uh, <laughs> half-time, maybe. Uh, I don't know, but they could have got away with it today. Could have got away with a lot of things. They were fantastic. They deserve the victory. The margin, excuse me, in the end's probably flattered um, Greenvale a bit. They've closed the gap at the end, but fair margin's probably 100 points. But they, it wasn't just one player, was it? It was a total team effort all across the ground. They all combined so well, and they made it happen. When you win a game of footy, it's always difficult to find players who didn't contribute. When you win a final, and you win a final by that margin, every single player today in one way or another has contributed. Shutdown job, offensive play, goal kicker, uh, tagger. Um, they've all just played their role. They deserve it. And for mine, as I said earlier, I'm on, uh, I'm on Graham for the medal. OK, that's Craig Clinic's pick. Big Angus Graham for the medal. We'll find out uh, very, very soon. Celebrations are already starting. Presentations about to be underway. We'll be back with all of those from Windy Hill very, very shortly. Coming to you on Speed 31 Sport. The Strathmore Community Bank has been a great help to a club like us. It's helped us maintain our equipment uh, for all, all, all parties concerned. That's all our juniors our seniors, it's not just footballs but it's things like safety equipment, um, all our uh, helmets that we need. We've had a new coaches box that we've built, partly funded by the Moreland Council. However, um, we just couldn't finish it and without the funding of Strathmore Community Bank this would never have happened. Thank you Strathmore Community Bank. Back here at Windy Hill and what a fantastic performance we've seen today by the Aberfeldy Football Club. 76 point winners over Greenvale in the Essendon District Football League. Premier Division Grand Final. The biggest blowout for many, many years. They have been sensational. And, uh, well, certainly big, big celebrations down Aberfeldy Way tonight. Uh, big crowd out there at the moment as we wait for the presentations. But uh, this, is what a, this is what a season's all about. Kev's down there with a very, very happy Aberfeldy president. Yes, I've got Aberfeldy president John Larkins. John, it's been 41 years. You must be feeling pretty good now. <laughs> I'm feeling... Uh... Yes, it's quite extraordinary, actually, if you look at all the, the circumstances. We've lost the last two flags. We were here on the big day um, last year and the year before. They're very hard to, very, very hard to win. And, uh, yes, for the club, it's a fantastic thing to uh, come back and uh, win a Premier Division flag after 41 years. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be mightily relieved and pleased, and I'm looking forward to celebrating. You're a nervous watcher, uh, but when you're up by about 15 goals, it probably makes the heart a little bit easier, doesn't it? Yes. Um, I think people would have wished for a closer game, perhaps. I wasn't. Um, I was just hoping we would play uh, as well as we have right through the year. We've really performed 
uh, very well. And uh, Greenvale have been a great opponent of ours for a number of years now. They beat us two years ago by 14 points. Um, and, uh, you know, to get over the top of them the way we did, absolutely terrific. Great you must, effort. You must be so proud of the boys, of their effort all season, but particularly today. Absolutely right, because we were in the... They've really dedicated themselves from day one of the pre-season to, um, you know, to get to actually get over the line and win, win a premiership uh, in A grade. And uh, a lot of these blokes have played in the um, in the two losing grand finals. So, uh, and we've we're lucky enough to get back Brock McLean, who came back. He's playing in the number that um, his uncle wore in 1974. So that's uh, number 12. So that's an absolute thrill. Uh, but. It's just a fantastic thing for the for our footy club that we've been able to perform on, on the big day because uh, people have been sort of grinding away at us and saying, oh, no, but, you know, you'll, you'll spit the dummy, you'll, you'll fall at the last hurdle. Well, we didn't. We actually played very well. So great well, for them. I don't want to hold you up because the no, presentations no. are about to start, but before we go, you want to send a cheerio to someone watching at home? Yes, I do. I want to send a cheerio to John Henry. I know he's watching Channel 31. And, by the way, can I say... It's been absolutely fantastic to have you guys involved. Uh, I watched the telecast last week, or most of it. But uh, John is, um, you know, he's got a, he's been diagnosed with a pretty serious illness. He's home watching with uh, one of our members, Grant Emerson. So to John, mate, best of luck, and I hope you enjoyed our win. Well, go and enjoy it, John. It's going to be a great night. Oh, thank you indeed. Back to you, boys. Good on you, Kev. And, uh, yes, best wishes to John. And hello to all of our viewers who... Uh, tuned in today. We hope you have enjoyed the telecast of the uh, ultimate game of the season in the Essex District Football League. Kevin Donnelly down there doing the uh, ground announcements as the presentations get underway here. And this is, uh, well, this is the moment that you play footy for to get that medal and get your hands around the Premiership Cup. Here we go. <laughs> Picked it in one, Craig. Why did we pick Craig as our... Uh, Guest commentator, expert he, advice, knows his stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, as I said earlier, there could have been uh, four or five midfielders won this today, but I think he had the greatest influence on the game, and I think uh, they've got that very right today. Often they get this one. This one's tough to give. Uh, you know, you could have six or eight. In a margin that big, you could have six or eight players. Uh, I reckon they got that very, very, very right. So uh, well done to the uh, the voters and the awarders of that medal. Players now coming up to get their medallions. I thought uh, Josh Toy played a great game down back. He was so, such a rocket Gibraltar down there and uh, repelled Greenvale's forward thrust on many occasions. He read the play so well. Absolutely. He gets the monkey off the back after 41 years too. It's a gorilla. <laughs> the monkey off the gorilla's back. <laughs> oh, I think people say that, you know, but oh, look at it this way. How many of these blokes have seriously carried the challenge of 41 years. Not, not many of them. The guys have carried no. the challenge of the last three. That's right. Um, there's a lot of people at the club that have carried the challenge of 41 years. Um, but to the players' credit, as John indicated earlier, John Larkins, there's a number of guys that have played in two losses. Bounce back today. A, a much different side of the last two years, to be fair, and, uh, and, and good on them. Um, well done. Mark Lynch, I tell you what, he also played a great game. He'll be saying that probably about every player, to be honest. I just noticed earlier, Greenville kicked eight goals in the last quarter. Um, and that's something we, we probably wanted them to kick in the second or the third quarter. But gee whiz, to, um, to get... Um, to have scored 90 points, which is what they scored, to me, 90 points wins you most grand finals. Very true. Not, not when the opposition kick 166. <laughs> no, that makes it a bit harder. That probably makes it easier to kick 90 at the end of the day. You're right. Essendon District Football League President Brett Scott there. Uh, Presenting the medallions, then you can see a disappointed Adam Marrick. He played his heart out today for the Jets. Empty feeling that. It wasn't to be as Kyle Reimers gets the medal around his neck. Peter McKee there, the chairman of the uh, Strathmore Community Bank, giving the players their miniature premiership cups. I reckon it's fantastic they not only get a medal, but they get a cup as well here. Yeah, the replica cup, that's been around for probably five or six years in the league, and um, it's... You just got to make sure the players take it from here. It goes in a bag, otherwise it's lost. 
We got yours on the net, mantelpiece still, Craig. Oh, well, mine's stuck, stacked up there, nice on the mantelpiece. There have been a few uh, medals lost over the years in the uh, celebrations lately. Oh, absolutely. You got to, um, The boys like to wear, wear their jumpers all night. They like to wear their medals on top of their jumper. Um, just got to make sure that little clip that goes around, it's nice and tight. That uh, Otherwise, she slips off and she's a goner. Well, of course, the... Uh, the signage there, Strathmore Community Bank, they have just been sensational supporters of the Essendon District Football League. They have, you know, Strathmore Community Bank, they're a sponsor of the Strathmore Footy Club, sponsor of the league, sponsor in terms of the show, to support the show. Um, you know, I uh, I think uh, a lot of people around Metropolitan Melbourne, in particular Essendon District footy fans, could uh, could seriously look at uh, considering Bendigo Bank as their banker because they support us. It's probably important we consider supporting them. Yep, they've been fantastic for, uh, for for local footy in general and particularly in the Essendon District Football League. So the Greenvale players, uh, this is the hard part, for, forced to watch what could have been. And I will great. Uh, I will know great sportsmanship earlier. I watched uh, the two coaches meet, shake hands, and I just watched the players. Abbas all left. They come over to Greenvale. They shook their hands. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, absolutely. You know, it's as hard as this pill is to swallow right now. That's the memory you have forever. <laughs> he's already started. Fair to started say, to he's celebrate. reasonably excited. <laughs> As a coach, he's the one you've got to keep your finger on. <laughs> yeah. We've all got one. <laughs> they make footy clubs tick, though, don't they? Oh, they do. They do. You need Especially to be in the down times and the tough times. Mid-winter when it's pouring rain. And but these are the moments now and for the rest of the night and probably the next few days are the moments you save it for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Look, I know at Strathmore last year, we made a massive effort to make tonight about the club, supporters, sponsors, uh, wives, partners, friends. Tonight was their night, and then we sort of tomorrow made it a little bit of an inner sanctum, and then Monday was the players' day. Because um, the people who put the time and effort in deserve to celebrate this as much as the players. And a lot of volunteers around, <laughs> a lot of volunteers around footy clubs, you know, the blokes who, who run the canteens, man the gates, uh, look after the property, up the oranges, all those, they get such a kick out of being part of the success. All, all they want to see is the team play well, they, and that gives them a smile. This stuff to, here to them is just gold. It's like, you know, it's, it may, they remember for their, for their lifetime, uh, and they don't ask for anything. That's all, you know, and they get this sort of reward, and it's fantastic for them too. Yeah, great stuff. Each player, of course, gets his photo taken with the medallion and the cap. Ryan Allen got up and down those stairs all right. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's recovered well. I, I was yeah. worried when he came off with that. No, he, uh, he must have had it strapped at half-time, but he uh, he was certainly hobbling when he came off uh, yeah. late in the third. He, he won't feel much pain tonight. Uh, a bit of anaesthetic later will fix it. Too true. <coughs> They just had so much uh, firepower, didn't they? Yeah, they did. You know, even blokes like Kefford who only kicked two goals. Yeah, but so he looked damage. dangerous, didn't yep. he? At different times of the game. So uh, they're obviously the benchmark for next season, Craig. And it's a reasonable benchmark too. Yeah. I mean, that performance today just takes it to a whole new level. Um, kicked 166 and they, uh, they've set a, a whole new standard from my viewpoint. So not far away from the actual Premiership Cup being presented. The culmination of a season's work. He was just terrific, Angus Graham. He hasn't stopped smiling since early in that last quarter. Firstly, number eight, Joshua Cavillo. That's why they've been called out. Yep. Together. That works okay, co captains. Never used it. I, I, look, I do know, I think Josh Cabillo was away overseas early in the year, so I think they must have made a decision that they okay. you know, wanted to bring someone up to fill that void in their frame with co captains. Would have been good to get them early while he was away then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had them round nine, <laughs> beat us convincingly, and round 18, beat us convincingly. So. so the runner gets a medallion, the head trainer. 
Yeah, great stuff. Well, it's a team effort, isn't it? Great stuff, yeah. Especially the people that are there in the dark hours of uh, the winter. Yeah, well, they put in all the work. The old hail, rain and shine. Great pitches there. Still a lot of people out on the ground. Well, if you've been waiting 41 years, Dags, an extra couple of minutes won't hurt. He's a popular one, obviously, the president. He's long-term, John. You know, I'm not sure that he's went to service, but he's been at that footy club for as long as I can remember. He could be president 10, maybe 15 years. I'm not yeah. sure how long he's been there, but uh, done a power work. Well, he's a happy man. <laughs> Good on him. Not quite sure about that <laughs> cap. I'm just so pleased to the, this bunch of guys in the club. You know, it's um, uh, we work, we have worked. Hello. We've lost it. So enjoying the moment, the president of the Aberfeldy Sports Club, John Larkin. He's everybody's friend tonight. Yeah, yeah he will be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of respect yeah. shown then. Yes. <laughs> so it's over Feldy's day today. Firstly, Damien Kevlar. He's adapted well to uh, local footy since uh, coming out of uh, league footy, hasn't he? Yeah, no, he's done. He has. Um, he's. He was. At, he did a bit of work at Aberfeld. He went. Dean Rioli was there as he, with, an, with him as an assistant, and then he worked with Mal, and now he's obviously working with um, with Adam. Assistant coaches being called out and individually okay. getting a medal. That's that's definitely new. Uh, team manager always, president always, coach, captain. But that's kind of where it's maybe trainer and team manager. But the, the assistance is new. That, and this is terrific. I think it's... Uh, How much work do the assistants need to put in? <laughs> Senior coach, Adam you can, Potter. You can have... So, some guys have an assistant coach just doing work with them on a weekend. I mean, I'm a little bit... I'm of the view... If someone signs up to do the role, they do the role and you give them a role to do, which means they could spend uh, they could spend 12, 15 hours a week in terms of work, all up, uh, working on with lines and with players. Okay. Okay. A lot of people have waited a long time for uh, this day and coming into the club straight away I knew that uh, the expectation was to make it back to the grand final and obviously uh, win the grand final and uh, you know, I'm, I'm relieved to be honest and at the same time I'm so happy for uh, all the people that have invested so much time in the uh, Aberfoddy Sports Club um, over a long period of time and it's, a, it's just a great feeling so to all our supporters thanks for coming back to the club tonight. Just finally, you know, Johnny Larkin said he's saying, what a great man, and uh, he's done a great job of 
rugby department. And for the uh, players, you know, congratulations, Reese Moylan, Courtney Johns, Brad Vassell, you're a big part of our group, you boys yeah. missed out to the yeah. court career. Well done, yeah. well done. Let's go over the night. So there it is, Aberfeldy, Premiers and Champions 2015, thoroughly deserving of the Premiership pennant. And they will certainly enjoy that. It's been 41 years in the making. So well done to them. Okay. So well, well done to the Aberfeldy Football Club. Yeah, look too, I think. Far too good. I think uh, congr congratulations to the Greenvale Footy Club. You know, they've had a strong year. They finished second. They got beaten up in the second semi final. They went to a prelim and they really beat up on Keeler in the prelim. They've come back today. You know, they didn't look like the team to me that was really beaten up in the second semi final or the team that won the prelim, but they offered something different. So I think, uh, you know, commiserations to them, but also congratulations on the year. Okay, so, uh, well, that's it for the Essen District Footy League for another season. When's all the planning start again? Uh, we've got two weeks off. Um, we've, started to, uh, we've started to work on recruits. Uh, we've met with recruits, and we will basically start pre-season in three and a half weeks. Well, there you go. Not much time off. But, uh, well, after some close grand finals, Aberfeldy breaking that uh, mould today with a fantastic 76-point victory in the end. And... Uh, but we hope we can do it all again soon because uh, we love doing live telecasts. The last two weeks have been uh, a little bit of uh, an experiment. And it's, and been, a lot it's, of, well. it's been a lot of fun. And uh, to think that, uh, that, that our uh, pitches can go straight into the lounge room at home and also uh, on the World Wide Web all over the, uh, the world. I like to give my wife a cheerio watching in London at the present time. So uh, it's fantastic that we've been able to do this. We've enjoyed it. It's been great fun. Well, the Aberfeldy boys, of course, uh, gathering out there to sing the song in the middle of the ground, which is, uh, has become a bit of a tradition um, in recent years. And they'll sing that a few times tonight, I would say, with gusto. A special comments to coming to you today from Strathmore coach Craig Fink. And Craig, I can't thank you enough for what you've contributed to the telecast today and for your incisive comments. No, look, thanks, guys. I've enjoyed the day. I would have... Uh... I would have liked the game to be a little bit tighter and, you know, everybody being on the edge of their seat, but, you know, we can't control that. Uh, Ab has completely controlled that. They dominated the game. They deserved the win. Um, I tried, I guess, to give as much information as I could to the viewers and to you guys about how I was looking at the game as if I was coaching. So I hope it didn't come across too one-sided or supporting one team and not another. I was trying to get a contest up um, best I could. So thanks for having me. I think it's a terrific initiative, great show, and um, hopefully I can help you guys out and again in the future. Just not grand final day. I plan being busy for the next few years. <laughs> we thanks hope, very much. We hope you are, Craig, and uh, thanks once again. To Benny, thanks, mate. Kev, fantastic job down there on the boundary, and to all of the crew who, who have worked so hard over the last uh, two weekends, starting very, very early, to bring this live telecast to you. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it, and we hope that we can do it again uh, next season and many times in the future. So uh, that's it uh, as far as the season goes in the Essendon District Footy League, and uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks, fellas, for a great effort. Thank you, and good night. Bye for now. Today's C31 Sport live broadcast of the 2015 Premier Division EDFL Grand Final was proudly brought to you by the Strathmore Community Bank, 337 Napier Street, Strathmore, and Prepack Cartons, 129 to 131 Sussex Street, Pasco Vale.